Hey there, welcome to a quick introduction about Tailwind CSS. One of the most important and popular CSS framework in the industry right now. Remember I said in the industry right now because it's currently used by important companies like Netflix, Microsoft, Verge and lot more. So there are a lot of things that we need to do but before that I want to give you a quick reminder. Consider this as a crash course about Tailwind CSS. We are going to cover everything that is important, but we are not going to cover every random topic. Nope, everything that is important, we are going to cover that and build a quick project in the form of landing page so we can practice everything. That's important part. The next thing is how to start this, like what is Tailwind, how we are going to do, what is the definition, give us some idea about it, right? But before that, I want to do a quick setup. Uh, just jump onto VS Code. I've created a folder called as practice and inside that I created some boilerplate code for index style and images. So what I did is I have this index.html with some basic boilerplate code, added a title, linked my ifavicon and my CSS file. I quickly added h1, p and p tag uh, just for practice purpose. Then inside style, I have imported a Google font poppins and I've utilized this as my font family everywhere. The other thing is I have a image folder, which holds my favicon, my logo and my product.jpg because we are going to create landing page. So we need some logo and product image so we can play with this. It's a basic structure that you can copy right now. Okay. Now one more thing, uh, I'm also utilizing one extension which is known as Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. It's officially by Tailwind itself. So we are going to utilize that. And also you can uh, install live server and you can just right click and start your live server. So you will have access to this demo page. Awesome. So this is my base setup. Now let's get back to our Tailwind part. So what Tailwind did is Tailwind divided every CSS property into a class and then we can utilize this class. What we call this term is atomic CSS. Now just to give you an example, let me jump on to my demo project and suppose I have this paragraph. Suppose I have this. So if I get into my style.css and create a class, maybe I want to play with the font weight. So what I can do is I can create a property, let's say font bold. And inside this, I can mention that my font weight is maybe 700. That's the actual font weight for bold. Now, whenever I want to make any font bold, I can directly use this property. Let's say class font bold. Now, if I save, get back here, you can see this is bold now. So this is how atomic CSS work. That means we have converted a property into class. Now, suppose I want to increase the font size. I can just write the font size here. For example, here, let me create a font size. Maybe I can create a class, let's say text, and then I can say LG and I can mention some properties. Let's say the font size is here going to be somewhat 18 pixels. And I can also add a property, let's say line height. And I can say line height will be 28 pixels. Now, if I save now, whenever I want to increase the font size, instead of thinking anything or applying multiple class, I can just say text LG. If I want small, I can say XS or SM or base, something like this. Now, if I get back here, you can see it's 18 pixel rest. Everything is 16. Oh, make it, maybe I want to create one more, let's say text and here I can prefer Excel, two Excel, three Excel, something like this. Let's try 3XL. I'm going with font size, let's say 30 pixel. And then I'm going to have some line height and I'm going to call this as 36 pixel. Let me save. Let me copy this one. Apply it here. Instead of LG, I'm going with 3XL. Now, if I get back here, you can see the change is clearly visible. Now, currently we are trying to do this manually. But what Tailwind did is, they have broken down every single property. We don't need to do this. All we need to do is just include Tailwind in our project and then we can start writing like this. 
it's going to be interesting once you understand how we are going to integrate and apply but i hope you got the base idea we have broken down every single property of css into a class and we can utilize this class with the help of tailwind now let's jump on to the tailwind documentation for once make sure you have installed this uh, extension i have already done that uh, so let me close this also, I have a resource. I'm going to talk about this in a while, but uh, let me get here. So this is the official website. You can clearly jump onto the documentation part. And now if you want to search anything, you can get here. Maybe I want to search about font size or font weight. I can get here and I can search about it. So you can see these are my recent search. You can see I was talking about color. I was also using some dark mode, responsive design and all of this. So maybe I want to understand about font weight, suppose now if I search about this, you can see uh, these are the classes that we can utilize and this is the property that will be applied automatically. And if you observe, we created a class font bold and this is the exact same property that I was talking about font weight 700. If I talk about font size, you will see we have this text LG where the font size is 18 pixel. Uh, we were using text 3xl and the font size is 30 pixel so that's how things are going to work so i hope you understand the basic crux of tailwind now there are a lot of things that we need to understand the first part is going to be installation there are multiple ways that we are going to talk about and then the common term like uh, what is this XS, SM, you will see other terms when we start working with padding and everything. So if I jump onto padding right now, you will see this 0, Y, X, T. Now if you have worked with bootstrap earlier, I guess you already know, but maybe this is your first framework. Don't worry, I'm going to explain everything in the next one. So we need to cover about installation and the basic tailwind language. Okay, I hope you got the idea. Now before moving forward to next lecture, I want to talk about this quick resource which is Tailwind CSS Crash Course. It's a resource that I created where I have included all the important links that we are going to discuss about documentation, blog recommendation. There are a lot of people, a lot of developers, companies that are writing blog about Tailwind. I have included some of the best one, cheat sheet and the extension link. Then I've also covered all the basic things that we are going to discuss maybe about background, how this numbering is going to work. You don't have to worry right now, but as we move forward with our lectures, you can use it. So I've included all the things that we are going to discuss as we move forward, uh, even the responsive design that we are going to discuss. So I just captured all the important information and stored this in this document. You can access this uh, by visiting the link and it will be super easy for you to just have all the information at one place. Now entire tutorial is divided into two part. The first one is where we are just trying to understand the concept by applying randomly. So we will play with our headings, paragraphs, span here and there, apply all the properties for background, hover, some related to text, font and a lot of things. Basically, we are just trying to customize and apply all the properties during the concept mode. And then there is a project mode. Once we learn everything, we are going to create a simple project and apply everything. For example, this is the landing page that we create with the help of Tailwind. So you will see that we have applied all our knowledge quickly on this particular page. It's a landing page where we apply everything that we know uh, with Tailwind pretty quickly. We use flags, we use all the padding, spacing thing, all type of color thing, extensions and everything. If I also get into the responsive mode, you will see it changes its uh, design when we are on a smaller screen and things work according to the screen size. So yeah, we work on two modes, the conceptual mode where we learn about the topic and the project mode where we quickly apply them. Awesome. That's all for this one. In the next one, let's start with the installation and with some basic Tailwind language. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's start our task with the installation process. How we are going to include Tailwind in our current project or 
in our practice session. So the first thing you need to do is you need to just click on get started or you can just jump onto documentation slash installation. And there are multiple ways by you can utilize Tailwind in your project. So if you are a beginner or if you are someone who is currently trying to utilize Tailwind with HTML and CSS only like us, then we are going to play with CDN. But there are chances you are working or learning React and in this particular process, you can also utilize Tailwind CLI. So we are going to do all the NPM stall and then all of this. But for now, since it's a basic learning thing, the installation process will be different, but the code part, the learning part will be same. So for now, I strongly recommend just to utilize Tailwind CSS with the help of CDN directly. All you have to do is just include this script at the top. So if you get here and here is our current CSS file and let me add this at the top of this. So here with this, our style CSS, we can overwrite Tailwind if we want, but everything will be followed according to Tailwind CSS. And here they have also given us example that how you can include a, every type of CSS property with the help of Tailwind. The other thing is we can also configure if we want, we can just create a JavaScript file and we can include this particular code that help us to configure Tailwind according to our own requirement. We are going to do this later. Right now our aim is just to add Tailwind in our project. So that's done. We have included Tailwind here. The other thing is let's test it out. Right now in our CSS, we have nothing related to any type of other property except uh, applying font family. So now if I try, uh, let's say class and if I want maybe text size or maybe let's say text size. So I'm going to go with my font size, which is text dash let's say to excel if i save get back here get here you can see it's bigger now now you will also understand that by default we are applying all the properties uh, according to tailwind now so there can be maybe margin zero padding zero by default everything is applied so this is much bigger now and let me try to do something else maybe four excel something like this get here and now you can see it's much bigger. So now they are utilizing power of tailwind. The other thing is we have to do everything by searching. For example, you don't know what this text Excel is. So you can just search about the property. Let's say font size. Now, if you search about font size, you will get information about everything related to font size. Even the reading part, you will understand if I use text sm this is the size text excel this is the size text to excel this is the size now remember i have currently zoomed it a bit uh, since i'm recording this lecture i want everything to be clear on my screen uh, for recording purpose but if you go with normal screen size which is 16 pixel by default you will have better idea let me zoom in again yeah so that's how you can apply font size Okay, now it's good time for us to play with everything. Since there are multiple properties, we can design a simple page with simple structure. Okay, that's about font size, but let's try to play with it. Uh, maybe I want to change color. So what I can do is just jump here, search about color. There is background color, there is font color, text color, border color, lot more thing. So if I search about text color, I have multiple of them not just one, two, but they have created entire range. So what they did is they created entire scale from 50 to 1000, something like this, 50 to 900 for every shade. So let me show you the shades. So if I jump onto the customization, you will see that for slate, they have from light to dark. If I scroll down a bit for red, they have 50 to 900. So they have multiple shade. Later on, we will talk about the customization. If we want to have our own, we can include it. But you can see by default, they have created shade for every single color, lime, sky, blue, indigo, purple, and lot more. So they have taken care about every single part about the color itself. Let's try to play with this. So if I jump here again, I'll go with my text color. Maybe if I want to apply something like a red, so if I scroll down with the red category, you will see I can use text red 700. 
so it will apply the color text color towards the red shade now if i save get back here get here you can see now this is red now this will be followed with every single stuff that we do let's try to play with heading let's try to add some background color now what we have to do search about it yep that's how you are going to learn if you search about background color you will see multiple shades and you can scroll down and select which one you want again the pattern will be same something like if you are working with font it will be text if you are working with background it will be bg and then the color name and its shade so let's say i want to apply something like amber so i can select it get it here and i can simply have a class and which is bg amber 500 if i save get back here you can see it's applied everywhere now maybe i need to do something else maybe i want my font to be at center i can go with text center if i save get back here you can see my text is as center maybe i want to apply padding top and padding bottom what we are going to do well first let me get here let's search about padding and you will see that they have some terms like zero again then uh, 0 0.5 1 2 something like this and you will also see t r b l something like this so what it is so t is for top b is for bottom l is for left r is for right and when you want to apply to entire horizontal scale it will be x and entire vertical scale which is top and bottom it will be y so that's how we are going to apply padding is p then x is for horizontal so suppose we want to apply for top only so we are going to say padding top which is p t dash and then a number now this number is important because it holds some value so for example one is four pixel and then we are going to have two which is going to be eight pixel then we are going to have three which is going to be 12 pixel four which is going to be 16 pixel and keep on following so these are the basic terms that we can use now you will understand this more as we practice so suppose i want to get here i want to apply padding to top only so i can say pt dash and then if it's four pixel i can use one if it's eight pixel i can use two if it's 16 pixel i can use four something like this if I say PT4, I get back here, get here, you can see now I have padding 4. Let's do more fun stuff. Let me increase the font size. Let's say text. Now 5 Excel. If I save, it's bigger now. Now if I want to have on top and bottom both, I can use Y. I can save, I can get here. You can see now it's equal. Now one more thing, when we have 0, it will be 0 pixel. Since 1 is 4 pixel, 0 0.5 will be 2 pixel. And similarly, this is going to follow everywhere. Let's try 7. That will be much better for top and bottom. Let me get here. Yeah, much better. Now let's do more fun stuff. Let me try to add margin everywhere. So let me get here. Now how to apply margin? So margin is going to follow something similar. For padding, we are using P. For margin, we are using M. Remember, for all direction, we can directly use P7. So it will be applied to all direction. Y is for top and bottom. X is for left and right. Similarly, for margin, if we want to apply on all direction, we can use M dash. Let's say for now, let's say four. Now if I save, get back here, you can see it's applied on all direction. Now if you search about margin here or you can directly click here you can see some similar patterns and margin 1 is for 4 pixel since we are using 4 it is going to be 16 pixel. Now remember all of this is calculated with rem but by default with our browser in normal setting unless and until we are not editing anything with our browser. Uh, rem is going to be 16 pixel which is by default so m4 is basically one rem which is 16 pixel so this is what we are utilizing here now let's try to play with border as well we are doing lot of stuff right let's try to search about border here 
So we have multiple properties and we can apply individually. We can have border width, uh, some type of style, radius, color and lot more stuff. So let's start with something like border width first. So if I want to apply border with the two pixel, I can use border two, border four and as we move forward. Also, if you remember, you can apply just border top, border bottom, left and right, something like this. So yeah, you can play with this. For example, if I want to have border top, just use border dash T. It will be one pixel by default. But if I want to use border T dash two, it will be two pixel four will be four pixel for eight it will be eight pixel remember the numbering is different with everything at the time of spacing we use one for 16 pixel because that's how our browser work for border 16 32 pixels are too much for border we consider two as two pixel four as four pixel eight as eight pixel so let me have something like a border uh, here let me get here let's say i want to apply a border uh, on all directions so I can use border dash if I want to have, have a top I can say T otherwise I'm going to go with all direction let's say maybe 8 pixel so I have visual representation or I can go with 4 so I'm going to have a border with the width of 4 pixel the other thing I need is radius so I want to have something like a 6 pixel again we are going to have another jargons don't worry I'm going to explain but let's say I want to have a six pixel. So I can just copy this one. I can get here. I can apply rounded MD, which is going to be my six pixel. Now I want to have some color to my border. By default, I guess it is black. So if I get here, it's gray. It's applied, but it's gray. So let's change the border color. Let's get here and let me copy some funky color. So it's easily visible. Let's say this indigo. And let me copy and paste it here. Awesome. Now if I save this, get back here, you can see the border is visible now. So what we did is we applied a border width. We apply what type of radius we want and we applied border color and that's how everything can be controlled. Now the fun stuff that you are going to see if now the fun stuff that I want to discuss is about the language basically. So you will see and I guess by now you are also comfortable with X, Y, T, bottom, left, right, something like this. So this is how things are applied. But uh, numbering will be different according to the shade that you are working or the property. So for example, when you are working with colors, things are always going to be the property that you are dealing with. So it can be border, it can be background, it can be text and the color that you are working with and the shade. But then again, there are a lot of things that you are going to see SM, MD, something like this. So again, that's a language thing about Tailwind. So if you scroll up, so if I go with my border radius again, you will see SM, which is for small, MD, uh, medium large excel and keep on following so that's how terms are going to work it's a base level thing that i'm trying to talk about so we can focus on more topics and when we are working on projects we are going to apply everything the other thing is you can also play with the styles so if you jump onto border style you can see if you want solid by default this is the solid one but i can go with dashed one i can get here I can apply the property which is border dashed if I get here get here you can see now it's dashed so that's how things are going to work so that's all for now I still want to cover a few basic point and then we are going to jump onto the project part uh, thank you for following so let's continue this in the next one hey there welcome back now in the previous lecture, we understood how to apply all type of property. So if you understand about CSS, you can directly search about that property and apply it with the help of Tailwind. Now these are the properties that you are applying directly. But there are certain properties that you apply on a special state. For example, when we are working on buttons, you have state like hover. So for example, if you just hover over to this button, you want to change its color. 
or the other thing is something like focus tape when you are working with forms you have input field and you select a particular input field and the field is focused so there are a lot of things that you want or there are fields that you want to have disabled by default so my main motive is to make you realize that there are multiple state how to cover these state well tailwind has covered them as well what you have to do is you just need to mention that particular state use colon and then you just need to define the property by default this will be applied on all the condition but if you specify a particular state it will overwrite it for example by default let's get here to uh, maybe our background color so by default it's amber 500 what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a hover and i'm going to use colon i am going to go with my bg i'm going to say red uh, 200 maybe or maybe 50 for example let me save so this will be applied on all but for hover this is going to be the property so if i jump here get here you can see this is red 50 let me try to increase it a bit let's say 500 so if i get here you can see it's red 500 when i hover now not only this i can apply different other properties maybe when i am hovering i want to change this text color so all i have to do is just search about my color this is going to be my text color and suppose i want to apply text as white so i can get here i can go with my hover and i can say text should be white when i'm trying to hover over the particular field so if i get here get here you can see now the background is red and this is white maybe i want to change my cursor let's say cursor search about it and by default it's normal icon but uh, i want this something like pointer so what we are going to have our cursor as pointer remember this is going to be our class for tailwind and what is going to be the state it is going to be the hover state and i can say cursor as pointer so if i get back here get here now you can see my cursor is pointer background is red and my font is white so we can do a lot more with states and i just took the basic example also if you want to just search about this you can search about state here or you can search about focus here something like this you will have handling focus and everything now there are other properties as well as i said if you're working with form you might uh, want to work with the disabled required invalid and there are multiple form state as well so yeah you can play with lot of stuff so this is the basic that i want to cover and i hope you understand okay this is possible awesome uh, don't worry we are still covering the basic part uh, we we still need to cover few points uh, we, we we need to cover about responsive design dark mode and then some customization after that it will be pretty quick for us to understand about how to implement them in projects uh, i just want to implement all the concept in this uh, demo uh, sheet or i should say a demo page that we are working then once you understand things uh, on project it will be easy uh, to go with the flow also remember this documentation thing uh, just read about this now you can start reading basically so here you can see i have talked about uh, the background here i have talked about the numbering system because now you understand about these number uh, we can work with width as well as everything so w is going to be for width h is going to be for height and again we have covered about padding now and something related to font we have covered now so you can read about them similarly for borders we have multiple thing and yeah display and everything we are going to deal with during the project part that's all for this one in the next one let's talk about responsive design thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one Hey there, welcome back. Now let's talk about responsive designing. That means working with multiple breakpoints. Now these breakpoints can be screen for our mobile phone, for tablet, for laptop screen and for big monitors. So there are multiple breakpoints that we need to remember. 
Now these breakpoints are varying from different categories. Uh, since earlier the mobile screen used to be too small but now they have decent size thanks to the upgrades by different companies. So there are certain terms that Tailwind follows. There are certain terms that Bootstrap follows or any other CSS. Currently we have SM, MD, LG, XL and 2XL in Tailwind. Now remember when I talk about SM with the responsive screen size, it will be different than SM with any other property for maybe border or anything else. So remember SM is basically small. When we talk about screen size, uh, small can be something like 640 pixel. But when I talk about border, small will be 2-3 pixels. Remember this point. So SM is different according to the property that you are working. But the point is that SM is small, MD is medium, LG is large, XL is big <laughs> and 2XL is uh, bigger than that. So that's how things are going to work. Now by default if I apply any type of property, let's say width, height, it will be uh, it will be applied to an entire screen. Basically they assume the entire screen. But when I restrict uh, let's say SM, it will be something like minimum width is 640 and higher than that. Remember this point. When I say SM, it's not just small, it says this and above than that. So you have to remember this particular point. So if by any chance I say I want to apply this background color uh, for all screen, then I'm directly going to use my background color. So that means I can say, okay, uh, the background color is amber 500. But maybe I want to apply a background color specifically for big screen then I can define that big screen with the help of these breakpoints. Now there are a lot of things that we can control, maybe width, height and lot of thing. But first let me make you understand about this and then talk about a uh, more width and height thing. So let's take new example. Let's take this hello world for now and jump here. Uh, so let's have a class. Uh, let's apply background color since that's easy to visualize. Let's say background and this time I'm going to go with the sky blue something like sky and 400. Now if I apply this 400 it's applied on all screen size. So if I try to do this small big any type of thing it's applied to every screen size and you can see the pixel at the top. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to go with the normal reset. So it's 100%. Okay, now let's do some more stuff. Let's uh, increase the font size a bit. So let's say I have text uh, uh, to Excel. Save uh, much bigger and I'm also going to apply some margin uh, on all direction. Let's say two. Yeah, better space. I'm also going to apply, let's say padding. Two. If I save, yeah, much better. So this is the box that we are working with. Now I want to say that on medium screen, let's say MD, the color should change to something darker, uh, maybe a shade greater than this 500. Currently we have 400, let's say 700, something like this. So what we can do is I can specifically control the breakpoint, which is MD and I can say BG dash sky dash 700 so now on all screen by default it is sky 400 but as soon as i hit md which is my 768 pixel it will change to sky 700 now here what i did is if i take a scale maybe from 0 to 1600 pixel 0 to 2000 pixel or anything by default this is applied on everywhere but now what we did is we said okay this is the breakpoint which is md which is 768 pixel apply this property after that which is our background sky 700 so now if you jump here get here now this is light blue but as soon as i go above 768 pixel this is dark you can see light dark light dark and above 768 pixel it will be dark so that's how things are going to work now if i create a random scale here on my screen 
so i have a meter suppose i have 0 to 2000 pixel for screen or anything so by default i applied uh, bg sky 400 to everything but i selected a breakpoint and said okay above this uh, it should be sky 700 so that's how you can apply a property now i can change lot of things according to these breakpoint it can be width it can be any type of other property i can control that now i can control more properties i can say okay uh, when i reach lg state the background color uh, should be red 500 something like this so if i get here get here so from 0 to 786 pixel it will be light blue then from 786 pixel to 1024 pixel i guess it will be uh, lg is 1024 right lg is 1024 right so it will be uh, sky 700 and above that above lg uh, 1024 pixel it will be red 500 so let's test this out get here get here light blue sky 400 sky 700 and then as soon as we cross 1024 it's red 500 so that's how you can control so there are multiple breakpoints and uh, properties that we can control here it can be font size and anything else now this is great again if you want to visualize this on a meter by default we applied this on everything but then we created a breakpoint and said okay above this this should be applied but then again we again selected a new breakpoint and said okay this should be applied after lg so that's how this is going to work if you scroll down you will see a lot of other examples and one particular example i want to cover is targeting the mobile screen which is pretty common and should be understood by everyone the thing is by default people think that applying sm is for mobile but nope remember sm directly mentioned that it's 640 pixel and above than that you can see at the rate media minimum width is 640 pixel and then above than that so if by any chance you want to apply anything to mobile what you have to do is you have to apply it everywhere and then for bigger screens you can cover it with the help of sm let me give you a quick example let me remove this background color for now okay by default it's normal now let's get here maybe for mobile i want yellow and for my tablet large screen or desktop or whatever everything else i want it to be red so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to say okay bg i'm going to have yellow 500 so everywhere i have applied yellow now okay oh great and then what i have done is i did a breakpoint selection and i said bg red 500 so by default this is applied from 0 to everywhere but then i created a breakpoint 640 pixel to everywhere so it's overwriting the default one so now it's bg 500 till 640 pixel and then it's red everywhere if you see on the meter from 0 to 640 it's yellow and from 640 to everything above it is going to be red so that's how you are going to target your mobile thing uh, maybe i want to target any other screen i can just add a breakpoint that's how this is going to work it's just simple calculation you just need to remember this from which point to which point you want to cover the other thing is we can apply a range itself so we can start from particular thing stop at particular thing and then control this let me say how so i've removed all the background let's say i just want to apply it to breakpoint between my md to lg that is 680 pixel to 1024 uh, pixel what i can do is i can say okay i am going to go with anything above md but then i can say max it should be till lg and then i can apply that particular property i can go with the for say background uh, red 500 something like this now if i get back here get here so currently it's normal nothing but as soon as you can see i am in the range it's red 
So I can select this range with the help of max term if you scroll down a bit. So this max is going to help me. Okay, this is the maximum limit that I want to go. So I want to start from MD, but I want to go till LG maximum. I want to touch LG. So LG is 1024 and MD is 768. So I am going to have a range of 768 to 1024. And that's when I'm going to have this red thing. And here you can see as soon as I scroll down, it's nowhere on top. It's nowhere. But when I'm in the range, it's there, the background red. So this is awesome. This help us to select a particular range also. And there are a lot more things that we need to do, but I hope you got the idea. That's all for this one. And in the next one, I want to talk about the dark mode, which is the speciality or I should say the advantage of using Tailwind since everything comes by default with the predefined dark mode settings and we can apply it. So thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's dive deep with the other state as well as some configuration. So here I'm going to talk about dark mode. Now by default with CSS dark mode doesn't exist, but Tailwind did some uh, configuration and created a new state known as dark and then we can apply some setting for dark mode as well. So there are three things that we need to uh, take care. The first one is to have some specific configuration to uh, add dark mode with our project. The second thing is how to have two different properties in our single file. So by default, we can apply any type of setting. Let's say I have background white. So that means background is going to be white everywhere. But if I mention dark background for some specific color, it is going to have this particular background color when our dark mode is active, when our dark mode state is active. So I can mention this particular state. If we have any type of specific property, it will be applied otherwise we have this normal property. Now similarly, I can work with my text color or any type of text background or anything else. So I can play with dark mode basically. The other thing is I need to have the configuration and I need to activate it. So by default, I'm going to have the light mode where I don't need to mention anything. But if I want to activate my dark mode, I just need to add a class dark. Uh, at the top of our HTML element and it's active. So let's do that uh, with example, you are going to learn the, everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new configuration file. I'm just going to call this as index.js. Usually you call this as tailwind config.js or anything else that remind you of, okay, this is a proper project file related to tailwind configuration only. But for now I'm going to say, index.js it's easy for us to remember since we are not adding any type of other js right now but remember i'm saying this again if you are working with js later on with different projects or anything else i strongly recommend you can call this as tailwind.config.js so you have a specific configuration file for tailwind and here I just need to mention the configuration setting. How to do that? Well, if you get into the installation part, and if you remember when we are working with CDN, we can configure things with the help of this. So I can mention maybe uh, later on, I'm going to customize uh, colors and everything, but with my tailwind.config, I can mention everything. So let's do that. Let's say tailwind.config. Uh, inside this, I can mention how to apply dark mode and I am going to apply dark mode with the help of dark mode class. Yeah, that's the basic configuration that we need to do. The second thing, let me just include this file, uh, which is going to be source slash index.js. You can add it at the bottom uh, or you can defer it here. So it's just the basic connection that we need to do. Let me all, since I'm not overwriting anything else, I am going to add it here. Yeah, so both the script are here.
the other thing i want to talk about is uh, how to activate dark mode i can say class here and i can say dark now remember when this is later on with javascript or react we can create a button so when i say uh, dark mode active i will have this class when i say dark mode off i will remove this class dark mode active i have this class dark mode off i remove this class so this can be done with the help of javascript if i give you a quick example let me get here uh, at the top you can see they have class equals to dark so if i remove this dark mode if i say light you can see the dark is gone if i say dark you can see they have included the dark here light dark is gone dark they have included the dark here so that's how this whole thing works behind the scene so our configuration is done uh, we have included the index file we have also activated our dark mode now if i want to add any type of property i can just mention here uh, let's try with this whole p tag i can say the background um, by default uh, let's say my background is sky 200 but when the dark mode is active let's say i'm going to have bg sky 800 something like this so if i get here get here you can see it's dark right now because the dark mode is active now if i manually remove this here and enter you can see now it's sky 200 but if i add this dark mode here let's say equals to dark you can see now it's dark so i can have properties for dark mode for everything not just with background for font color padding margin anything any random css property that you have in mind you can add it it's just like a new state you have hover uh, you have your screen size you have your dark mode now i hope you got the idea that's the basic thing that i wanted to cover uh, currently we are not working with the javascript otherwise i can create a new button i can uh, i can just have a button to add and remove but uh, i just wanted to give you a base idea when dark mode is active we will have a class dark otherwise we will have this empty or no class right here so that's how you can include dark mode the other thing that is more important is that here now with this configuration file we can play with anything we can extend certain colors we can create our own class name we can have our own shade anything that we want so this file is going to be pretty important as we move forward so that's all about the dark mode and basic configuration i just want to take one more uh, lecture about concept uh, which is how to add colors uh, our custom colors and custom shade and then we are going to jump onto our project Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there and in this one let's talk about configuration pretty quickly. There are multiple things that we can configure with Tailwind. Now as a beginner you are not going to dive deep with this but when you are working with react projects or anything else in future maybe Vue or Angular. There are a lot of things that you want to configure for example uh, where you are going to include your files your tailwind code so you can mention that you are going to have on your html as well as js file and then you can create custom theme colors for example you can mention by default there is no blue or something like this or you can create custom theme colors for example inside colors you can mention blue is going to be this hex code or orange is going to be something like this gray is going to be something like this you can create your own color names like for logo you have specific name or anything else that you can also customize your fonts family you can mention okay when i'm using this these are the two option when i'm using this these are the two option then you can also extend current settings for example with spacing i guess we only have till 5x or 7xl but then you can mention 8xl or 9xl according to your own requirement you can have your own border radius and you can mention that so there are a lot of configuration that you can do with tailwind either it is a extension or just overwriting or something like this so we can do that 
and we can also mention our own color shade and lot more stuff so if you just jump onto the customization you will have option about each one of them now if you read about content you will understand the path that uh, where you are going to include your tailwind classes it's pretty important when you are working with react and you will understand as you flow with react directly then maybe you want to override the screen size or anything else so instead of 640 pixel for small you can mention that okay i want 480 pixel for small and you can overwrite everything like for lg currently it's 1024 but you can overwrite and say 976 because with different framework the sizing is different so it's hard to maintain everywhere what you can do is you can overwrite here with tailwind then again with color font family and everything else and if you jump onto the screen you can also add new screen sizes uh, for example you can have tablet uh, and you can call this as 640 pixel or laptop for 1024 pixel or maybe desktop for 1280 pixel so you can include them like this currently we have uh, smlg and all of this term but you can include them again you can customize color and currently these are the shades that are available but something like this we can override and if you scroll down a bit you can have a new color uh, any name you want then you can mention its shades and then you can give specific hex code for each shade so yeah it's a lot of fun to work with this then again uh, things are going to work with spacing by default spacing is one for four pixel or something like this you can extend it to uh, one for eight pixel two for twelve pixel and so on so yeah you can play with every single thing that exists with our tailwind uh, so let's try to play with color for now so this is the configuration that we have uh, we can play with the colors so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go with my theme if you remember you can get here get into your theme you just need to go with your uh, color this color part or you can extend it here you are overwriting but if you want to extend you need to get here so overwriting means that blue exist currently with tailwind they have a specific code here we are overwriting but when i get into extend i mean that already everything that exists is still there but i want something more so yeah that's what we are going to do i am going to get into my theme great inside this let me have open and closing braces and then i'm going to extend things here let's say extend and then again open and closing curly braces what i need to extend i need to extend colors and open and closing curly braces now here i need to mention what is the color name that i want to extend or everything else that i want information with so what I can say is, okay, I want a new color and I want to call this color as dark or maybe for some reason logo. So this is the color name that I want to give. The color name is now logo and I can create shades of it or maybe I can directly give value depending on my own requirement. So if I want to give a direct value, I can give it here. But maybe if I want to create shade, uh, let me scroll down a bit. I can create shade something like this. 100 200 or something like this let's create two three shades and remember this is going to be in quotes and here inside this something like this i can create shade let me copy this one only yeah so this is how my shades are going to work now i can say text logo dash 100 earlier we were using text sky 100 now we have logo as our color and 100 200 as our shade so if I want to test it, what I can do is here, let me have my BG sky and instead of sky, let me try to use logo. So now this is going to be logo 200 and logo 800 for our P tag, third one. So if I get here, it's not working. Let me get here again. Okay, it should be extend instead of extends. Get here again and now it's logo color actually so if i have dark mode active it is going to be logo 800 let me save this with dark mode yep it's working fine so that's how this logo color is going to work so basically we extended a new color 
and we called it as logo. If you want, you can call this anything else. You can call this for some reason you want to call this as ABC. Now this is not going to work because currently it's logo. So what we can do is we can get here and we can call this as ABC. Let me save, get here and now it's working fine. Now remember currently we are adding entire shade range. But if you want you can add just one color. You can just mention here the color name and then it's hex code. So that's how extend is going to work. But you can also add normal colors without extend just like uh, it was mentioned here. So you just need to get here into colors and you can mention them here directly. That's how things are going to work. It's not just overwriting but also extension as well. And this can happen with screen size, everything else. I hope you got the idea. That's all with the whole concept thing. Now in the next one, what we are going to do is we are going to play with a project. Now concept thing was important so we can try and test everything here and there at a base level. But with project things will be much more formatted. We will have uh, all the properties in case like hover, we will have cursors, we will have flex and lot of other stuff. So thank you for following and in the next one let's start our project basically. Hey there welcome back. Now let's build this quick project and I'm going to call this project as SoundMate. It's a simple landing page where we are going to apply a lot of concept about Tailwind and do some customization. So whatever we have learned till now we are going to apply at one place. One basic thing I did right now is deleted everything. So I don't have any code inside my body. Everything is empty with my style.css just the basic font family setting. And I've also removed all type of other configuration added a simple logo with two code versions or I should say shades. And I have the logo favicon and product image that you can access directly. So what we are going to do? Well, we are going to have a proper structure and then we can start applying Tailwind directly. I have included the Tailwind CDN file and also included my index.js. You can also call this as tailwind.config.js. Awesome. That's the base setting and here is our quick project. So there are a lot of things that we need to focus. For example, I want to divide everything into structures. So I'm going to have a header. I'm going to have a main and then I'm going to have a footer. So what I'm going to do is inside my body, I am going to have a div so I can cover everything inside this. I'm going to have header. I know you did this multiple times, but I'm just going to have a basic setup and then I'm going to have a footer. Once that is done inside my header, I'm going to have again few divs and all of this to make this happen. So inside my header, I can uh, simply have, I can mention its height. I can mention that when things are responsive, uh, it should have a different height. I can mention that the border, there should be border bottom. So I can do a lot of things with my header itself. Remember, this is going to be responsive. So yeah, we are going to play with screen sizes as well. The other thing is I'm going to have this hover effect. So basically I'm going to create a nav for this one. Okay, I'm doing a lot of talking. So let me get into header first. What we need to do first? Well, let's start with header. So uh, other things will be easy to visualize. So inside my header, I'm going to have a div. And then this div is going to divide into two parts. The first part is going to be for my logo. And the second part is going to be my navigation. And inside my navigation, I'm going to have three spans. The first one is going to be for my home. The next one is going to be for my products. And then the next one is going to be for my about us. Uh, let me divide this. Awesome. Now here inside this first div, I'm going to have my image that is going to be for my logo itself and the other thing is I'm going to have a alt tag let's say sound mate here awesome and then I'm going to definitely going to have a span which is just going to have sound mate as the our website name okay awesome now we need to apply all the tailwind part 
so the first thing is if you get here uh, if you get here things are just normal uh, without CSS uh, that's how things should be so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first apply some setting also let me remind you I'm working on a normal percentage so I'm not zoomed in uh, that's what I want to say so what I'm going to do is the first thing is I am going to have everything at center with a range so i'm going to have a specific range that okay the width should be maximum of this and then i should be at center so margin should be auto on both side so what i can do is i can get into this div because that is going to hold everything inside so i can just have a class and i can say maximum the width should be 7xl something like this and remember you can definitely search about the width so you can have something like max width you can, if you search about this and if you scroll down you can have maximum width of lg or something like this if you are going with 7 xl that means maximum our screen is going to take 1280 pixel so if we have anything more than that we are going to leave on both side so what we are going to do we are going to have margin uh, let's say m and then it should be auto it will be divided on all the sides automatically this is great now if i save and get here you can see things are already here now if i jump back here the next thing i want to have is height for my header since currently it's taking a lot of space i can mention that okay height should be 28 something remember again for height you need to jump here and this is fixed height that I want so I can just search about height and they have many values for example 20 is this going to be a prox 112 pixel it's a multiple of 4 so it's easy to remember 4 is 16 5 is 20 6 is 24 and something like this so I want my height to be 112 pixel remember I'm going to change it and play with it but let's say 112 pixel so that is going to be my fixed height then I am going to have something like my border bottom. So let's say border B, that is bottom. By default, this is going to be gray color and it will be one pixel. So if I save, get back here, you can see I have a line here about my border bottom, but this image is taking too much space. So we need to set its width as well. All of this is working fine. I have height of 28 and border as bottom. The next thing I want to do is uh, let me fix the image size first so i'm going to get here and add a class name and i'm going to have a width let's say my width is 12. if i save get back here now you can see this is working fine much better to view okay so currently all of this is taking entire box or i should say entire width if you see this this div this image this pan then again a new div something like this what i want is i want to divide them into two part if you remember all the concept of flex what i can do is i can have applied flex here on this particular div if you if i zoom i can apply div on this so on left hand side i will have my normal div for logo on right hand side i am going to have navigation so and i can apply this on the top of this div let me remove the sidebar and here i can simply have a class i can just say flex that is i'm that's what i'm going to follow and then i'm going to simply say i want to have space between them so i can go with justify between i can also apply the direction and everything else but if i save now you can see they both are divided i can also go with item center so they will be at center let's say item center if i save get here you can see they both are in center now if you want to have more information if you search about flex you will see that how you can apply flex directly so i can apply a flex then if i want to apply any type of wrap property i can do that if i want to play with direction i can mention flex row flex column reverse and column reverse if i want to play with a gap or justify content i can do that for now i am going to go with flex uh, justify between item as center and i am also going to have some padding on both this direction top and bottom let's say two 
and I'm also going to maintain margin on the horizontal direction which is 2 if I get here get here yeah so this is the gap that I'm talking about now I think I this took this too much so let me get here let me go with instead of 28 let me try this with 16 okay this is too small but I need to divide this currently they both are on a uh, column direction top and bottom I want this to be side and side so what I can do well I can just use flex directly I can just say class flex because by default they follow row so if I say flex they are on side of each other I can say item center so they will be at center let's say item center if I save get here you can see it's at center awesome this is much better but currently we are applying this on everything we are not working with responsive right now remember it's applied everywhere now there are a lot of other settings that we need to play with for example I want some gap here I want uh, font size to be increased I want gap here here so let's apply that what I'm going to do is first I'm going to play with logo I'm going to have some margin left so I can have gap with this particular image let's say margin left 2 then again I'm going to have it a font size to be bigger let's say text uh, to excel will be fine then I'm going to have if I want to change I can change its uh, font family and everything uh, much better the other thing I want to play with is my menus now first let me jump here with my navigation menu let me have my class I am going to have padding here let's say on all the directions so if I save and get back here awesome the other thing I want to do is I want to increase their font size let's say LG much better currently look at home only because these two are not applied then I want hover effect so if you observe here I want this effect uh, let's do that let me get here what I'm going to do is I want to have something like hover on hover let's say my background color should be gray uh, with the 100 shade and the other thing is I should have a pointer let's say cursor pointer uh, this should work fine so if I get here yeah this is much better I can also apply my uh, border which is invisible so I can just say rounded directly it will be applied on all the cases I can do this with hover only if I want save get back here yeah much better if i want i can change the font to bold as well that's according to our requirement let me copy this with every single menu one let me save get back here yeah much better if you want you can take the shade a um, bit darker let's say 300 so it's easy visible on screen you can see it's visible now so that's the first part if you look on the full screen it's much better compared to what we have required now you will see a bit difference because our text are going to be different so yeah you will see a bit difference here and there so that's the header part there are a lot of things that we still need to manage let's jump on to the next part which is going to be our main uh, where we are going to have two sections. the first one is going to be our hero section and the next one is our product section let's continue this in the next one so we can explore more information thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let's get into this main section where we are going to have two part which is hero as well as products so let's get here let me create two sections yeah with the first section we are going to have a normal hero part where we will have a tagline or i should say the heading and then some subtitle and then a button with some hover effect and then in the next one we are going to have this card and everything else let's do that now in this section what we are going to do is I'm going to have a h1 tag that is going to have some lorem information 
let's say this and then i am going to have a p tag that is going to have some subtitle uh, let's say lorem 7 something like this uh, let me remove these commas and everything and then i'm simply going to have a button let's say no more awesome so this is going to be our first section then i'm going to have a second section that is going to include multiple cards here so i'm going to have a div inside this i will have multiple cards i'm going to create one card first and then just copy paste it so this card is going to have a image mm, let's say something i'm going to add it later but then it is also going to have some title about that product and then some description about that product so if i save and get back here you can see this is the title this is some information here let's get here so with the image i can go with images and product image i'm going to repeat it everywhere and then here i'm just going to say headphone uh, usually you should have your product name here but since it's a demo project let's say headphone and for product name i can use something let's say sony wh1000 uh xm4 something like this whatever comes in your mind you can use that and for description i'm just going to have lorem 10 awesome we are going to repeat it multiple times but let me get into my section one which is this so what we are going to do well things should be simple i am going to have everything at center so i can say text at center the other thing is i'm going to maintain our margin top so i can say 20 and i'm also going to have margin bottom so let's say margin bottom 10 so if i save get back here you can see this let's have some equal spacing so instead of both of them to be different let's say margin y 20. ah awesome that's done the other thing is i now need to play with sizes so let's say class remember when we are working with margin one is equals to four now let's play with size i'm going to have text let's say 4xl again here things will be tricky so i can just go with font size if you remember i can say uh, xl is 20 then 2xl is 24 everything is increased with 2 so xs is 12 then 14 then remember base start at 16 then next will be 2 and 4 increase so lg will 2 increase then xl all of this is 4 increase 20 24 remember when we are working with font it's usually 2 increase then 4 increase then 6 and keep on falling for example xs to sm it's 2 increase then again 16 to 18 then now 18 to 20 and then 20 to 24 it's 4 then 24 to 36, 30 to 36, it's 6. Then 36 to 48, it's 12. So the increase is different. Don't try to remember these numbers. You will get habit as soon as you start working with Tailwind and start searching here. So here I'm using 4 Excel. So if you scroll down, you are going to see 36 pixel. Awesome. For my P tag, I want to have something like text Excel what is excel if you remember base is 16 lg is 18 then excel is going to be around 20 if i get here excel is 20. it's a habit that you will build as you move forward then i want some margin on top for this and margin on bottom for this as well so if i get here get here you can see it's working fine now since this is a button we can do a lot of things here let me get here the first thing is i want its text to be lg what is lg 16 is base then lg is going to be 18. i want to have a border i want to maintain some gap with the border so if i save and get here you can see the border is attached right now so i want to maintain a gap i can say padding 3 now now the gap is visible the next thing is i want border to have some rounded curves so i can use just rounded 
looks good now i want to have some background so remember we created a custom background here logo let's try to use that let's say logo 700 so if i save get back here this is logo let me also change the text color so by default let's say text to be slate 50 yep it's better and let me add some hover effect by default button has cursor but i want to change the color let's say bg and i'm going to have logo 800 which we already have in our configuration so if i get here you can see it's working now it's much better uh, let me get here let me add a dot so it's exactly the same yeah also i should increase the rounded thing to lg if you observe the difference here and here it's visible so if i go with lg here it will be much better yeah that's the completion of this section let's talk about this particular card this small thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to work with this individual card first let's have some classes let's say i have this class i want its width to be something limited it should not uh, exceed some width let's talk about max width so let's get here maximum width uh 320 pixel yeah that should be fine if i consider this screen it is one two it's around 1400 pixel so if i divide them into three that will be fine 320 will be fine so let me get here and for class i am going to just say maximum of width will be sm so now this is going to have max width of sm awesome it's clearly visible now as a card without doing anything but we need to apply some flex property so everything is arranged properly so this is great our start is great we have applied this let's apply some border as well by default it is going to be one pixel on all side i'm going to go with rounded right now and i'm going to maintain a padding of three so it's visible yep that's great the other thing is if you want to play we can have curves to our image as well so let me do that directly here let's say class and i can say round it directly and if i get here you can see our image is curved and i can go with rounded mdlg to have other variation let's say md something like this yeah so the first thing is great we did a great with our whole card thing uh, one quick thing i need to do is to add a hover effect whenever i'm hovering over to this card let's say cursor is pointer since we are not linking it anywhere i'm just adding a cursor as pointer so when i'm hovering over this card it's pointer awesome let me add a few settings to our image h1 and p for my h1 i want to have a text some text to be bigger let's say i have text let's say 2 xl it should be 24 pixel i guess if i want i can just confirm this again font size and 2xl is 24 pixel this is great and the other thing is i want to maintain some gap from my top so if i i want to maintain some gap from image to this heading what i can do is i can go with m and go to top and bottom and say 5 so if you observe yeah this is much better now what is 5 if you remember just go with margin if you go with five here you will realize it's 20 pixel remember these are the multiple of four this is awesome i don't think we need to add anything with description if you observe the card right now uh, both of them looks great now this currently don't have any space so we need to maintain some so what i'm going to do is with this whole div or with this whole section i can add some space on top and bottom so let me get with this section let me say class margin top and bottom let's say y two three for now let me save yeah i have some gap now 
you can see this is going to be my card now what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this card two three times let's say one two so total i have five card or let's say six card now if i get here you can see that's the direction they are following also the gap is all nothing what i can do is i can jump here at the top that the dev is covering everything all my cards here so what i can do is i can get here i can say class and i can just say display as flex so that means my flex property i want to have my content to be at center let's say justify center the other thing is i want them to be wrapped so they follow a sequence if i go with this yeah it's great i just want to maintain some level of spacing but if you observe yep it's a success if you know flexbox you know how this is going to work we are just utilizing tailwind as language to do this so what i'm going to do is with this card i want to maintain some margin on all side because these are currently literally attached to one another so let's say maintain 20 pixel on all side let's say margin 4 so i'm going to maintain 20 pixel i've applied to one card only but you can see it's working fine so let's say i am going to have this on all the cards If I save this one, if I get back here, much better. You can see visually it's great now, but yeah, there is some issue here and there. We will fix it, no worries, but that's how it is going to work. Now, the other thing that I want to work is footer. So let's talk about this in the next one. We did pretty well with this whole flex thing, but let's focus on footer in the next one. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's start our task with footer. So if you observe, we have footer here. And it's simple, just border top, some text and should be center. That should be fine. If I get into my footer, I am going to have a P tag and I'm simply going to say sound made 2030, something like this. And again, I need some setting firstly for this text. So I'm going to have a class let's have some size let's say 18 pixel so i'm going to go with lg the other thing is i want a specific color so i am going to go with slate 900 so if i save get back here and get here this is the text i want it to be center and everything so what i can do is i can play with some classes here on my footer i can mention a specific height let's say 16 i am going to have a border for top let's say t and then I'm not going to add any type of width or color because I'm going with default thing which is one pixel and something related to black. I'm going to maintain padding on top and bottom. So if, without padding, if you observe here, this is the case. Uh, height is something like uh, 16. So I need something to make it at center and some space on the top. So for topping space, I'm going to go with padding on all direction, which is going to help me maintain top and bottom space. And I want to make it at center, let's say tech center. So this is going to help us to align things. The other thing I want to do is I want to have margin top to maintain some gap here. So I can say margin top seven. If I save this, you will see the gap is increased. I can remove this gap now which I applied here because this section hold gap which is something like 20 this section hold gap so I don't need to maintain gap with margin bottom here yep that's great that's all about footer I know this was quick the other thing that we need to focus is the responsive part basically to play with something related to a uh, responsive thing so maybe we want to decrease the size or something else let's play with this so we can understand more or we should say practice more towards breakpoints and smlg and everything
Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's try to play with some settings related to our responsive screen. What I mean by this is uh, maybe if I want to get here and if I have certain screen size, I want them to be on next line. So I can do that or maybe at currently I'm following flex direction as row by default. I want the flex direction to be row and all of this on should be on top and bottom. Then maybe I want to do something else here and there. So what I want is I want to play with my screen size. And the best thing is let's try to do with our header. So the first thing by default, this setting is applied on all of them. Now, if I talk about the meter currently, the height 16 is applied everywhere. So that means zero to whatever pixel that exists. My height is 16. What I want is I want to have my height 28 for my mobile that is zero to 640 pixel. And from 640 pixel to infinite, I want my height to be 16. I can do that. Uh, all I have to do is let's say my height 28 everywhere. And from my SM, that is my 640 pixel, I want my height to be 16. Now, if I save, get back here, you can see currently this is my height, which is till 640 pixel. This is going to be my height. And if I increase this, you can see now how my height is low. Let me also do one thing. Uh, let me try to change the border width. So if I get here border width, let's say border eight. So it's clearly visible to us. Save, get here, get here. You can see now this gap. Okay. That's the first change that we did. Remember, you need to remember these breakpoint. The other thing is currently by default, the direction is flex row. So I want from zero to 640 pixel, the direction should be flex column and then it should be flex row. So first I'm applying flex column to everything. Uh, this should be flex. Yeah. Zero to infinite. Then I am going to have a break point and say, okay, greater than 640, it should be flex row. Let me see, get here. You can see now they are top and bottom. Yeah, awesome. That's how this is going to work. Also with my small screen, I can have some gap. Remember I can use max SM also. Let's say max uh, SM. That means zero to 640 because it's maximum. The limit is maximum of 640. So I can have max SM. And here I can mention that uh, I need some type of top and bottom gap. So let's take this and I want to add this with my image basically. And I want to do this with my this div and this div or I should say nav. So max SM uh, margin top and bottom. Uh, let's say five for now. Let's play with this. So you can see now the gap has increased. So if I go with margin two, you can see I have some gap. So if I increase this on big screen, it's not there, but from zero to 640 pixel, it's there. So that's how we can play with this. And a lot of people don't know about this, but yeah, we have the source and we can do a lot of things here. Let me go with this as one. If I get here, this is great. But instead of applying this to my div, I can apply this to my nav and I can just say class max SM and by default I don't need it. I just need it for my mobile screen. So I can say uh, something like maybe two with my navigation. Let's see this much better. Also, let me get here and I'm going to remove this border eight save. Yeah. Let me increase the gap, 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 gap on top. It's going to be three. Yeah. It's great. Now I can also change the color to hundred.
this is great now if you want you can also increase this for this div but i don't want it so i'm going to skip it here and this is good if i want i can change the padding somehow so instead of padding 3 i can go with the padding 2 yeah much better so this is how my current status look like awesome the other thing i might want to change is these font size maybe maybe not but let's do that because we are in a tutorial so we can play with it so what i want is i want uh, let's try to play with max sm max sm from 0 to 640 pixel i want my text to be instead of 4xl i can go with 3xl let's save so on small screen this looks good and if i go with bigger it's bigger yeah something like this i can do that also let me change this and go with the uh, here max sm and i can go with text uh, lg let's save yeah this is much better for our small screen and this is for big screen awesome this is great the other thing maybe you want to improve or include is uh, if you see we don't have much gap here maybe you want to change that you can or maybe we want to have gap somewhere here we can do a lot of stuff maybe we want some padding by default to our main we can do that or even to our top div here i can have some type of padding that is going to maintain some gap here everywhere on the entire screen that's all that's all about the whole tailwind thing i just wanted to cover some basic stuff by now with the help of concept and this project we mostly covered a lot of things we understood about extension played a lot uh, with all the properties since this was a crash course i think it's enough now all you need to do is just understand css well and then you can just search about all the properties here on the tailwind documentation because now you know how these things are going to work also you will see dark mode some different type of configuration here and there according to the project that you are working so suppose if you are on react the configuration to extend things will be different so they will have something like module dot export currently with the our cdn things are extended with the help of tailwind dot config so the inside content is same just the file is different or currently since we are using cdn so we are using some direct link otherwise with installation you have to do npm install so whenever you are on react part you will learn about this and how to extend things automatically that's all about tailwind i hope you learned a lot of stuff here with this session now before ending this session uh, i want to give you one quick uh, tool or website which is flowbyte or i am going to give you an advice that you can search about tailwind component or tailwind design online and you are going to see a lot of example what they did is they utilize tailwind code and design several website you can jump onto tailwind css you can search about component and they have full fledged website that they design with the help of tailwind so if you just jump here you will get a lot of examples and you can check code here you can read how they are working with tailwind how they are designing stuff so what are the properties that they are using so they have these pages that they have designed and you can check out their code so it's available in html react and view so we are currently covering the html demo part so you will understand this not just the simple application ui but there are a lot more uis that you can play with uh, maybe that's just input fields so you can see it's simple if you see the code uh, they have div label and, and all the information that how the width is going to be full rounded md broader gray and a lot more things this focus state and a lot more the other thing is also the flow byte which is utilizing tailwind so they created a lot more component for example you are going to have something like buttons so if you jump here with buttons category 
if you scroll down they have created multiple buttons so if you see that for the first one you can see the text is white you can see they have specific background color on hover the background color is a uh, pretty dark which is blue 800 when you click on it it focus to ring 4 so if you click here it will be focused now when the state is focused it will be ring 4 and lot of other stuff you can read about this and you can have information about everything not just the button they have multiple category of button you can see here i guess they are playing with uh, more advanced stuff like having a gradient color and then border and all of this so if you know css this will be pretty easy let me get back here go to my components again and if i scroll down uh, go to cards you will have information that how they have designed cards you can see they have cards on hover background is changed some title and some description h5 and p tag again then they have button and lot more so they did pretty well collecting all the tailwind knowledge and creating multiple components now your task is just visit the official documentation check about the component here and just visit the flow byte and check about the components here and just read about the code so you will get an idea if you know css tailwind is just converting these css properties into class name and then apply it directly that's all i hope you had great learning session thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back shubham this side now let us move forward our journey towards a new project which is cinemate or you can call it as signmate or something else it is related to cinema or i should say movies where we are going to give information about multiple movies here you can see we have all the movies that are currently popular or playing then we have top rated movies or upcoming movies as well now to be honest you don't need to focus on the data but the building process here we are utilizing api to access all the information so we will be exploring about tmdb or i should say the movie db api it's something like imdb but for developers so if i open any movie you will get information about the title its image one quick overview and about its category review runtime budget and lot other information and we are also going to have a quick imdb link so we can have information directly from imdb as well now that is going to be our project yeah it's multi-page so we are going to utilize route also if i need to search i can search something maybe if i want to search beast here you will see i now have a result and some information about beast related movies let me get back to home the other thing is this project is perfect to revise all the concept that we have learned till now like routes and using api not just this we are also going to explore new concept like using env file so we can store apis using tailwind css yep we are moving towards tailwind css so we can understand how to configure this we can also understand how to create everything based on tailwind and we are also going to utilize dark mode and light mode so things will be different for example on light mode we have text that is of maybe some black color and as soon as i switch on dark mode the text is of something related to white so we are going to experiment lot of thing according to dark mode and light mode the complete app is responsive so if i get into inspect try to decrease the size here you can observe this entire page is responsive now if i open this here you can see get back here change the theme yep so that's how things are going to work this is an important project after doing the entire stuff we are going to deploy it on versal or netlify using github so we will push our code on github and then from github it will be connected to versal or netlify also in future if you want to update anything it will be just one command away so you can push on to github and from github it will be pushed to netlify or versal automatically so this is going to be a fun project to revise everything as well as to learn new stuff i hope you got the quick introduction about this 
before moving forward i strongly recommend to create your own project file i created this cinemate project file inside my project folder and i did basic setup as usual i got i got my src folder inside this i removed all the unwanted stuff i have removed all type of css here also inside my app.js and index.js i have removed unwanted stuff i have added two three images uh, i have added a image folder here images to have some kind of backup image that we'll be discussing later then i have something like page not found image then i have my logo and inside my public i have replaced my favicon as well as these two logo so that's the basic setup no code addition just the removal part now from the next lecture let us focus on other stuff because we need to understand how to register an account how to utilize the api their endpoints lot of stuff we also need to understand how to integrate our tailwind so this is going to be a fun journey and throughout this journey we are going to make lot of mistakes and learn from them thank you for following i hope you guys are excited and i see you guys in the next one Hey there welcome back now let us begin our basic setup so the first thing i'm going to do is of course i'm going to have a component folder so i'm going to say components yep and if you remember i am now going to have a index.js as well so i can have all my component exported from uh, index.js basically so inside this let's have index.js now every time i create a component i need to register it basically so that means just to export it from here also i'm going to create a new folder which is pages and again i will have index.js now the other thing is to have routes either we can have them on app.js or we can create a different folder i'm going to create them in a different folder so you can build your habit through lectures only so what i'm going to do i'm going to have a folder called as routes awesome and again inside this i will be naming the file as all routes.js awesome so inside my app.js currently i just have a h1 tag great no worries uh, let me also create two component which i know i'm going to use which is going to be our header.js and the second one is going to be my footer.js okay awesome now let me get here let me visualize this website so i can have understanding about what other pages i need or other component i need the first thing is if you look on to multiple pages we are just demonstrating all the movies in cards so that means i'm going to have a movie list page and then i'm going to have a movie card something like this component so there will be definitely we are going to have a movie list page movie list dot js that will be utilized basically for every single page if you see home i have this but the card information is different uh if i visit top rated i have the similar pattern uh, if i go to upcoming i have a similar pattern and if i try to search here something let's say avatar the page is almost similar just the thing is we have this information so movie list and then maybe if we want we can have a different search page so we can have other information as well or if you remember the nesting concept or something like this we can follow that if i search something here i can have this movie list nested and this will be the information that i am going to get from my search we can do that but i will keep it in a different page let's say my search dot js then i'm going to have a new page if you remember page not found yep i'm going to create it page not found dot js because now we have information that how to handle it so these are going to be my pages okay we are missing one page suppose if i open this movie this is going to be a page uh well it is going to be movie detail page 
or movie item the individual movie item so i'm going to have movie detail dot js yeah so this is all the pages i think we require that is going to be the four page format yeah that should be enough then we are going to have multiple components for example we need to have this card so i'm going to call it as movie card easy to understand or i can just call it as card that should be fine because we are only going to have one card so i can say card.js or movie card.js if you think you are going to have multiple cards now what i mean by multiple cards for example if you are building uh, e-commerce then you are going to have card card and you are also going to have product card and there are chances your recommendation card can be different because the design is usually different for them so you will be handling multiple cards according to the website so we can name it anything else card is fine for us right now so i think this is the base structure uh, later on we can add more things according to our requirement but i think this is the base that we want so let's start our job the first thing that i need to do is create a base setup for them also have them inside index.js so let's do that let's use our afc for all of them and then create a base setup now remember uh, some of them will be work as a section some of them will work as a header footer some of them will work only for a division so we need to be careful uh, how we are going to have them for example here i am covering it with div but if i talk about header or footer i will cover them differently so if you remember we cover footer with footer i know it's basic but i'm just giving a revision for example if i create here a testimonial component i will probably cover it with section because it is going to take entire space so yeah Now here you will also see like many developers follow they try to have comments for like uh, maybe for layout they use uh, header and footer and then maybe for their sections they will have a cover then there will be for elements like card is an element basically so you can have a comment that this all of them are elements all of them are layout material like we can have a sidebar so it will be under layout so that's all these are the three component let me close all of them now i'll get into my pages get here now i'm going to treat this like a page so i'm going to cover them inside main that's all that's done uh, i can close this one right now and we need to work on routes but before routes we need to install react router dom so i'm going to stop my server and i just need to go with npm install react router dom 6 remember it should be 6 that's done let me restart my server npm start let me close this one yep it's up yeah it's working also let me get back here get into my package.json and here i have react router dom so that means the package is installed now i can create routes for each one of them uh things should be simple now before starting with routes we need to have our wrapper to our index.js so i just simply need to import it so let's say import and here we just need to import browser router 
yep this looks good and if you want you can rename it like i mentioned during the tutorial it can be router and here i'm going to utilize router and my app should be in between it awesome that is done now we can have routes so if i jump here and i need to start with imports imports about my routes and route and my pages so let me simply have a import first for my routes and route that will be from my react router dom the next is going to be all the pages that we need to direct to or that we need to have route for uh, first i need to have my movie first i should have my movie list then i need to have my movie detail then i can have my search and then page not found this will be from my pages that's it now you can see how simple it is to have imports for pages and component because things are easy to export from my pages.index yep awesome so this is done now let us mention the route we need to mention them but we before that we need to create uh, the component for our all routes and i can remove this and here instead of dev i am going to have fragments yeah inside this i'm going to have all my routes so first i'm going to have routes and inside this let's add individual route now instead of this closing tag i will add them as self closing so yep this is going to have my path and then it is going to have my element uh, element is going to take our a page or i should say component in terms this is also component basically but we have them under pages folder okay so the first path we are going to have is going to be for our home that's great and what we are going to show is the movie list so if you observe on our home we have now playing movies uh, so there will be multiple categories inside our api so this will be for now playing that is movies that are currently in theaters right now so this is now movies then we have popular so all the popular movies that are recent it can be in theaters it cannot be so depending on their run then we have top rated all the movies that are top rated on imdb and then upcoming so yeah i highly doubt if this data is correct or not because on now playing also we see this dragon ball and then on upcoming we see this also i think they are re-releasing the spider-man with some uh, new unseen footage so you will see this mixed data and let's get back here so i have this route uh, for home and then here i'm going to use my page movie list awesome now remember one important thing we are going to pass certain information later on as props because if you observe we are going to have movie list on all the pages still on all the pages data is different why well the thing is we are going to pass prop or i should say with different page uh, link for example upcoming for example top rated something like this with different page link we can have different api call so either we can pass them here so if i say this is home page i can pass information like if we are on home page i can just say uh, my api path something like this api and i can have information now playing now on the movie list page uh, we will call the api related to now playing something like this we are going to do that later and understand more about it but for now let's stick to our route and then let's have few other so this is about our movie list again others will be movie list but first let me create about movie details so i'm going to have slash i can have movies slash id and then this should go for movie detail then here i will have 
movies slash or I can go with like title title slash movie or movie slash uh, title slash ID or movie slash ID something like this and then movie slash top or popular something like this there will be other categories that we will understand in the next one where we are going to discuss about the API but this is also going to have movie list page then we are going to have movies slash top then we are going to have upcoming it is also going to have movie list then we are going to have search this is going to have search and then all the other which is our page not found so yeah this is how I define them now this one is going to be different for um, person to person to be honest user to user developer to developer because uh, IMDB currently prefer title here so it's usually title slash the ID we can have movie something like this awesome okay that's done now let me test it out but remember this is not going to work so if I jump here and if I try to have maybe slash movies slash top you can see I still get hello world but I should get something like uh, top it should be movie list why this is happening well we haven't added route in our app.js so by default it's just a normal application uh, that is loading this so what we need to do is we need to add this we need to import our route as well everything we did but we haven't connected our route yet so I'm going to have my all routes here and this is going to be from my routes slash all route awesome let me have this here let me save now if I get back here you can see now if I open top it is movie list now let's try to have something like upcoming this is page not found because I added an extra M let me go with upcoming this is working then uh, if you remember I have other one as well which is my top and then I have popular this is also working fine then let's go with our individual page movie slash 5 yeah it's a movie detail page if I go on to home this is working fine now remember currently I'm using a path as slash if I remove this and try everything so this is movie list page awesome if I try with movie slash 5 this is also working fine so that's how we are going to work I hope you got the idea how to have your base set up currently if we haven't defined any component we just gave them a base structure and and utilize all our current information now in the next lecture we are going to integrate our tailwind CSS so we can just start adding some sample component like our header and footer and then we are going to focus on our API so that's all for this one and in the next one let's talk about tailwind CSS hey there welcome back now let's move towards tailwind CSS yep so we don't have to write CSS anymore let me get here jump on to tailwind CSS click on get started and remember I'm using version 3 make sure you do that otherwise different version create problem so let's try to be on same page now what I'm going to do I'm just going to install tailwind CSS get here uh, stop my server for a while let's go npm install then here they are trying to add in dependency so let's do that let's say dash t and then tailwind css add 3 remember after this we also need to do some configuration 
Oh well, let me close this one, get into my package.json and here you can see your tailwind at the bottom your with your dev dependency, remember dash t, so here it is. That's it, now let me get back here and here you will observe that they are asking us to create tailwind.config.js. Yep, this is going to store a lot of information and it is also going to give us power to customize the current tailwind with our own color, own plugins and lot more information. We are going to explore that as well. For now, let me close everything and let me minimize this. And this is going to be inside our root folder. Yep, where you have your package.json or git ignore or readme. So here you need to create new file and it will be tailwind.config.js. Yep, this is where we need to add this sample code. Now currently you just copy paste this. I'm going to add customization in a while, but you can just have this. We are going to add our dark mode information here. We are going to extend for our minimum height or multiple screen. We are going to have our own colors. So that is going to be inside this file. Okay, let's, okay, let me save and close this one right now and complete the other step. Uh, then we need to import all of them. So that means all of this should be imported in our index.css. Yeah, that's it. Let me save and close this one. Now there will be other step as well, but remember this was not react installation. This should be enough. And now we can use with our react. You don't need anything else. Uh, okay, so let me get here. Let me get here. Uh, open my any page. Let's say this one and uh, let me start my server for a while. Okay, so this is going to be our current page. Let us try to have some sample code about our tailwind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on to I'm going to get on to our pages and then inside movie list and here we can utilize the tailwind CSS code. Here, let me jump onto home page, get into docs, and if I scroll down a bit, I'm going to find some information about font size. Click on font size, and here, let's experiment this. So, I'm going to have a font size of 2xl. Let's say, let's copy this one and let me refresh. Things are working fine. Get back here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this inside a div. Awesome. Add a class to this div. Let's say text to, let's say text to Excel. And I'm going to take this down inside it. Awesome. Let me save, get back here. Now you can see the size is increased. Let's try something bigger. Let's say text 9XL. Let me save, get back here. You can see it's bigger now. So that means my Tailwind CSS is working because now we have access to all this. This is basically settings that are predefined in class or I should say this is basically CSS that is written, already written and we have access to their class name. So that means if I need to add any type of property CSS is written and they have specific class name. So for example, if I need to have font size for any span or any p tag to 20 pixel to 14 pixel, then I can use text dash sm text dot access, which is going to be for 12 pixel. Now these are some basic terms that you will get used to as you work. Like there will be base. That means the normal default setting. Then smaller than that, we are going to have SM and XS. Let me try to zoom in a bit more. Then bigger than base, we have LG, then XL, then 2XL, 3XL and keep on following. So base smaller than that, SM, XS, bigger than that, LG, XL. So that's how things are going to work. Now we can try to add any type of functionality. One other type of parameter you are going to see is with width. So if I get here with width, with width, you will see something like numbers directly. So you will see 
width 1 is going to be 4 pixel, 2 is going to be 8, 3 is going to be 12 and they keep on increasing. So this is going to be other format. You can see that how this is working w dash number or w pixel and then you can provide some information. Also you can provide some fraction and divide things up. Yeah, there is lot of thing and by default they have certain uh, word as well uh, or I should say term. So you will also see them. We are going to use them quite a while like w screen is going to be 100 vh or w full is going to be 100%. Then we have minimum, max and fit. And you are going to see other type of parameters with minimum width and maximum width uh, like this one. XS, SM, MD, LG, XL. You will also see this with bootstrap if you remember. So none is basically max width to none. Then we have XS which is basically around 320, SM384, MD448, LG512, something like this. So that's how this is going to work. And then we can use it anywhere. And if I get into height, it is going to follow something similar to our width. But if I jump onto minimum height, it is again going to follow the term system, which is screen, min, max, width and everything. So, yep. So there are two, three parameters that you will get used to. Width will be direct number, then there is min width, which is some term, then max width, which is bootstrap terms. I usually call them because I started learning bootstrap first. So here you will see SM, MD, LG, Excel. And then if you jump onto the previous example, font size, you will see base, then SM, XS, and LG, Excel. So yeah, you don't need to remember anything. You have access to this doc. Just jump here and try stuff. The documentation is excellent. So if you want to add some type of background color, just get here. You will see tons of background color predefined and you can add them. So suppose I need to add this background color, for example, or maybe something like, or maybe something lighter, maybe this one. So I'm going to just copy this one and all of this is class name. So you can just get here and add it here. Now this div is going to have this BG and this text size get here get here you can see this div is currently have this text size and this bg let's try to add some padding right let's get here try to search padding and here you will have padding and again with padding we are going to have a lot of information like padding 0 is directly 0 pixel x is for x axis left and right y is for y axis top and bottom if you want individual one top right bottom left you can add them And then you can add different values. So P1 is going to be one pixel on all sides. PX1, it is going to be on left and right. PY1 is going to be top and bottom. Now one here refers to four pixel. So let me add PY1. Let me say, okay, one is pretty small to be honest, four pixel, it's not visible. Let's say if we have it or not, let me try to define it here uh this is py1 and here if i scroll down you can see padding top and bottom what i'm going to do is i'm going to have 10 let me save and here you can see now it's visible let me add it to left and right as well so let's say p10 get here you can see now we have proper visible gap so that's how it is going to work other thing i am going to recommend is to check out margin Again, X is for X axis, Y is for Y axis, then TRBL, that is going to be our top, right, bottom, left. And we can apply values in similar way. One other thing I recommend is that we use a lot is going to be border. So just search about border radius as well as border also. So with border radius, you need to utilize rounded and then all the information. There are different type. We can play with their own parameters. So if I take example, it is going to be SM for two pixel and then MD for six pixel, normal rounded is four pixel and keep on increasing. So yeah, you can play with radius, width. So border two, border zero, border one, they, they have all the values. 
border color so you can specify any type of color that you want they have a lot of variety so it's great to be honest like like let's say i'm going to have this border color let's try something that is easy visible let's say this one and here we have left so i'm going to remove that let's say this uh, first let me keep this and see the difference remember it's not working why because we have selected the border but we haven't defined its width so this is border color but we also need to define the width so let's say copy this one get back here first this is going to be the border width then border color and you can see this is pretty small it's there but it's small so what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase the width let's say instead of two let's say have eight get back here you can see now it's visible and let's do one more stuff one more pretty quick stuff let me have this blue everywhere yep now it's visible and the other thing i need to add is rounded for my radius and remember it's not going to be two or four something like this it is going to be lg excel and then i also need to add margin let's say margin five but for rounded i need to check values let's say uh, rounded lg it is going to be eight pixel so rounded lg save get back here you can see it's working fine so that's how we are going to utilize tailwind now remember you don't need to learn them either you will have them in your mind by practice only or you can just jump on to documentation anytime uh, you don't need to learn them that's the first step to be honest it's everything is according to our practice so that's it that's it the base thing about tailwind we have lot of things to be honest it's impossible to cover in just one lecture it can be entire section or, or i can say it can be entire course on tailwind itself so instead of building all of this alone let's try to use a tool yep i am i am the guy who use tools uh, because it's fun it's help us to balance stuff by manual and by other information so what i am going to do is i am going to utilize a tool known as flowbyte so they are great uh, they have predefined components we are going to utilize them and customize according to our own requirement they also have paid plan but free is sufficient as a beginner uh, they have defined everything with tailwind already for example if i need to create a button so they have defined multiple types of button here uh, like this and this is the code so they have defined everything if we need to change the border radius for this particular button i can change with the rounded currently it's md i can utilize my own so that is why tailwind knowledge is important so we can customize here for example they have padding y is top and bottom 2 so if i want to change padding i can utilize according to my own requirement so that is why the tailwind knowledge is important so we can utilize our current knowledge and access other information now i'm going to utilize this suppose i want to create a card for my movie or maybe in future for my e-commerce so they have multiple type of card that we can simply use and then we can customize for our own requirement so suppose they have max width for sm and they have background as white for normal viewing so currently i'm using dark mode but for normal viewing they have background as white so that's what we are going to utilize and if you observe here they have created a button applied all the padding and everything we can get here and customize according to our own need one thing you need to remember everything that we are doing is for html and css not react so suppose if you try to copy any type of code or snippet online make sure all of this is class so we need to use class name so they have a tag we need to use link there are a lot of things that we need to change and if by any chance you are not changing them react will give you a warning so you can change them later for example href will be 2 so there are things that we need to update okay so all of this is done with tailwind now one last thing which is the most important if you observe we have this dark mode how this is going to work 
well tailwind now give us super power for dark mode so that means in one click we can change things from this to this now if you observe in light mode we have font as something like black and gray and in dark mode we can have font as white and other type of gray or light gray so how to do this well we can define two properties everything will be applied on both of them but if we need to override something we can just say in dark mode have this type of background in normal world we are going to have bg white in dark mode we are going to have bg which is our background and slate 800 which is this color all the other properties like rounded will be applied to both padding will be applied to both and then outer ring will be applied to both so everything will be applied to both but if i need to overwrite something on dark mode i can just say dark then colon and then the particular class name that i need to write so remember light mode should be the first one and then dark mode this is great and you will see this for multiples thing so for example this is just for the div here if you scroll down now for h3 they have defined for a font as well so here the font color is text slate 900 which is going to be for every mode light mode and for dark mode it is text white similarly for paragraph it is text slate 500 and for dark mode it is 400 so we can define stuff but how dark mode will be activated well it's simple with one click all we need to do is add dark on the top parent so if i need to apply dark mode to a single component or entire page i just need to add at the top parent let me give you a quick example on uh, this website which is flowbyte they are also using tailwind so if i get here scroll down they are adding this dark class on html so if i switch this to light mode dark class is gone if i add it again you can see they have applied dark when dark class is active that means all the dark mode stuff this all the class that are dark mode will be working then otherwise it's not now you can do it for an individual component they are using body they are adding background color to body so they need parent of body to have this dark so suppose if we are inside this app.js if i want all my pages all my component to have dark mode i can have option here dynamically so if dark is true i will have this class otherwise i don't want this class or better is to just control our html root that is the top one uh, we can just go with document or document element and then add this class which is dark so that is the best one remember we can just have an individual component in dark mode suppose if i get here inside movie detail if i want this only the child of this component to be dark i can just give it a class as dark and then all the child inside it will follow the dark mode pattern this is like activated inactive activated unactive activated or i should say inactive to be honest inactive activated inactive activated so yeah that's it that's all about tailwind that we should know to start everything yeah there are customization that we are going to do in a while but uh, like in themes i can add multiple of my own screen so sm will be applied to only sm then md lg then i can add my own color my own font family extend the spacing everything i can do like i can define a term like for excel so if i am not comfortable with rounded for my border radius i can define okay this is 4xl and this is going to be 2rem so then i don't need to utilize any type of rounded i can go with my uh, border radius 4xl we will do that don't worry in future that's it that's all the tailwind that you need to know rest everything is going to be through practice and while working on project thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one Hey there, welcome back. Now let's talk about our API part. So we are going to utilize TMDB API and we need to register it. It's free. We just need to create an account. Once account is created, I'm going to talk about the documentation part that how we are going to build up a link, send a request and what type of parameter we need to work with. So first, let me get here, click on join TMDB 
And here let me quickly register and fast forward everything. Once the initial step is done, we need to just verify our account. So my email is verified now and I just need to log in. That's done. Now what you need to do is you need to jump onto their documentation because everything that we are going to do right now will be through documentation. They have given step by step information that how you need to get your API information and everything. So they literally created screenshot that now you need to click here on your profile page. You need to went to the settings part. And once you are in setting, you need to click on API part and then you need to access your API. So let me demonstrate that. Let's jump on to our profile and setting. Click on setting. And here you will have access to your API information. Remember they currently hold two version, which is version four and version three. We need to work with version three because version four is still in working and they don't have all the information with version four. So I tried that it's still uh, under progress. And here with version three, we have access to everything. So yeah, you need to utilize the API key for your version. Chances are if this is not active, you will have option to just click here and generate your API key. That's it. That's the step to first access your API key. Then you can just copy and save it somewhere because we need this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a link.txt. It's a temporary file for this lecture so I can store all my information. I've created this file in my root uh, so I can just store all my information. Uh, you will see what we are trying to save. So this is my API key. Then let me get back here and don't try to use the exact same one. Please create your own API key. Uh, I'm going to delete this. So chances are if you are trying to use this, it will give an error. So it's better to use your own API key. After each tutorial, I delete these API key uh, and then everyone gets an error. So just create your own API key. It is going to take just few seconds and that's it. Now let's talk about all type of links that we are going to utilize. Our account is done, our API is ready, but how I'm going to get data for my movies, for upcoming movies, or maybe for my search. Let's search avatar. And this is all through API. How I'm going to get access to that information? Well, if you scroll down here, you will get access to movies, you will get access to search, TV series, TV episodes, and lot more other information. So what we are going to focus is movies. So scroll down, get into movies and you will see a lot of links where you just need to send a get request and you will have access to information. For example, if I need access to latest movies, I just need to go and send a request to the latest movie API. So you will have information that what query strings you need to attach and how your link will look out. For example, if I say try it out, this is going to be my base URL and then I need to attach my API key, then language. So language is optional, but API key is mandatory for this particular get request. Similarly, if I go with the maybe for now playing. So here, this is going to be my base path. If I click on try it now, you will see this is my main URL. Then I have movie slash now playing. Then I have my API and then I have my language. I can have multiple pages according to the response, but this is how things are distributed. This base URL is going to remain same, which is dmoviedb.org slash three, which is our current version. Then this is going to change according to the path that we are working with. If we are working with path of TV series, it will be different. Uh, maybe shows it will be different web series it will be different and movies it is different then api key which is a parameter you can see the question mark and here language is a parameter and page is a parameter so that's how we can do all this stuff now you can also test your request here as well you just need to paste your api key and send a request 
but I recommend try it on a official tester, REST API tester or something like Postman or, or directly on your VS code. So if I jump onto my API tester and here, let me copy this, add it here. Also, let me copy my API key, add it here, send a request. And here you can observe at the bottom, I got a 200 response. That means everything is okay. And all of the information along with the image. So I can access the response here. You can see the overview, the title and all the information default. Here you can see fall is basically the movie, this movie for best friend and something like this description. Yeah, for best friend and everything. So that's how you are going to get access. I guess these are 20 movies and we have multiple pages. So in similar way, we are going to send fetch request. So that's it. That's all about the movies. There are multiple path that we can work on. Then we are going to have search. Uh, basically we can search movies so we can search according to companies, but we need to focus on movies. And again, if you get into try it out, you will have option to uh, include your query and all the other stuff. So here query is required and API key is required. So you will have your information about the base URL, then path, then your parameters. Here you need to add a parameter, which is query. And then you just need to provide the string. That's it. That's how things are going to work with our API. Now why I have created this link.txt. So here I can add all the API information at one place. So we don't need to look what type of API path I need for search, what type of API path I need for uh, maybe now playing or anything. So here I can just say, suppose I'm looking for a movie called Avatar and uh, here is my API key. So I will have this as my base URL for my search. So now I know this is the base URL for my search and I don't need this other information, for example. And here I don't need these extra parameters. It's totally dependent on me. Similarly, I'm going to have all of them. So we can access them at one place. So that's all for this lecture. Uh, I'm just going to add them here uh, so you can access them from next one. That's all for the API. And I see you guys in the next one. So we can create base UI and start our work. Okay, let me update this in a fast forward way. That's done. So here I have my API key. And if you observe, there is a pattern with every link. So the pattern with every link is that we have our base website URL, or I should say the API URL, which is with everyone. Then I'm going to have a path. For example, here I have a path for my movie. Uh, suppose I'm uh, trying to find movie for maybe Avatar or maybe Spider-Man, that individual movie ID. I need to add it here. Then I have a path for my now playing, for my popular, and here for my search. So this is pretty common. And then we need to add parameter. One parameter which is going to be common is API key. But then with search, we need to pass the query. So for example, here I have avatar. Uh, one quick test we can do is with movie ID, we can replace ID with any movie. For example, this is the ID basically. And it will look something like this. So that's how things are going to work. And here it is going to be movie name. Yeah. Awesome. Now with this common information, we will break down this. So we don't need to use this again and again. Uh, since we have base URL, we will create a variable. Then we will break down path. For example, for popular, we will have a path like uh, movie slash popular, something like this. And then API key will be stored. Uh, we will create a env file. So we will have a variable for that. And then we will fetch the query about movie name through URL. So we will have variable for that. So that's how this is going to work. 
I hope you got the idea. Now let us try to create a base UI and then focus on this again. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us start our task with basic UI. What I'm going to do is get into my component and first complete header and footer. Remember, we are going to utilize Tailwind along with Flowbyte. So just get into explore component and here you can scroll down a bit. You will see navigation. Yep, here is our navigation and you will see multiple design. Um, we need to follow this one where we have some logo or brand name. Then we have certain links and then we have this search. So I'm going to scroll down a bit. This looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one. Now there are a lot of things that we need to replace. So be ready with that. Uh, let me copy this inside my header. Let me paste this one. And the first thing I should do is to align them properly. So let's have it them here. Uh, instead of header, you can just keep them in nav. It will work fine. The first thing that you should be careful doing is to replace class with class name. Be careful. Just have class equals to with class name equals to replace all of them. That's done. There are a few things that we need to do with the replacement, but we will understand this uh, from the console log. The second thing that it requires a closing tag for IMG input and everything. So with IMG, we need to add that closing tag. You will see the underlying jiggles input. We need to do that here. Again, if you see, we have input again. Let's do that. Let me save. Yep. Looks good. Let me get here. Get on my website. I don't see this because I don't have it anywhere. So first I need to get into my app.js. I need to import my component. So I'm going to say import will be my header comma footer and both will be from my component. Yeah, that's it. And I can now have them. So here I am going to have my header then I am going to have my footer awesome if I get back here you can see I have this header now this looks good we have our header now remember I'm not trying to be exactly the same because there will be certain customization that I will input here or that you might need according to your own requirement but the first thing First thing is, uh, remember, get into inspect, get into console and you will see certain warnings because we are converting HTML and CSS to JSX. So this fill rule will be converted to fill rules. We need to change these type of stuff. Let me get here, get into my header, search for fill rule and I need to replace it with my fill rule. Make sure to do that carefully. Uh, let that's done. And let me also replicate this with clip rule. This is going to be equals to and this time it will be. Yeah. Let me replace, get here, save, get back, refresh. All errors are gone. First thing is let me quickly fix this. Add my own name and my logo. Second thing, let me fix this, add my own links. And third thing, quickly add a navigation for my search. So let's get here. And here all I have to do is remove this link for their logo. And I'm going to have my own logo in a bit. But I also need to update the alt tag. This looks good. Also, the this will be gone. It is going to be link and this is going to be link and this will be to our own website now i need to import all of them let's say import first thing is going to be my link that will be from react router dom 
awesome the second thing is going to be my logo that will be from my assets slash logo dot png let me save get back here yep so logo is updated now i just need to update the text let me get here i have my cinemate and now i need to focus on the stuff that is related to my links yep these are a lot so we need to focus on we need to have home popular top rated and upcoming let's do that so what i can do is i can utilize a lot of replays i can have instead of this a tag i can have link this is done now instead of closing a i can have closing link this is done now instead of href i am going to have two now remember be careful i'm trying to show you everything so you understand how this happen also chances are you are going to have multiple a tags so be careful you see that currently i'm going to only uh, replace three href with two so keep account of these number that's it and i'm going to add a new li for the last one uh, let me close this the first one is going to be home that is slash then i'm going to have uh, now playing i guess popular so i'm going to have popular that will be movies slash popular movies slash popular then i'm going to have top rated and then upcoming so this is top and this is upcoming let me save get back here about oh sorry i haven't updated the text basically so i need to get here the first one is home second one is popular third one is top rated fourth one is upcoming awesome so if i get back here just check the url popular top rated upcoming now i need to give you a guess why this is not highlighted well if you remember when we are working with navigation we need to use nav links yep so now i am going to have nav links here so i just need to have nav links everywhere and one important thing when i am having nav link for home it should be mentioned also remove this current because nav link will have information about it that's it now if i get here now if i click on popular and click on this inspect you can see they have the active class but the problem is tailwind css don't have any type of functionality for active right now i mean they don't have a css for this so don't worry we will update it later but here you can see now we have this active class if i click on top rated active is gone from popular and if i get into inspect for top rated it's there one thing you can observe if you uh, watch out css uh, or i should say class name for the first one which is home they have something which is which we need to use for active you can see this is the css we need it's currently in blue something like this you can see so we need to update it uh, what i can do yep 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 we have the solution so what i can do is i can create two groups active and non active css class that means active and inactive and whenever we have some active we will apply that and whenever we have inactive we will apply the remaining one i will talk about this later but i hope you got the base setting uh, that's great that's done now we have our search uh, but before that let me also add my footer so i'm going to have a simple footer i can search it here as well let's say footer if you get here 
you will get multiple example yeah this one looks fine i will have the information about my website and then uh, maybe instagram and other links any footer will work so if i scroll down a bit here you can see it's a simple footer they have detailed footer as well depending on our requirement yeah we are going to go with the simple one this one so yeah looks good to me let me copy this one get here get into my footer and paste it here now i need to format this first okay and first replace class with class name class equals to class name equals to replace this the second thing i'm going to replace my no i'm not going to replace a tag because here i'm going to have my instagram and everything so these are external links and i want them to open as a fresh page and i just need to add target which will be underscore blank so they will open on a new page and then i will have a warning uh, you will see a warning for uh, no referral so let me have this here first let me save get back get onto this page uh, refresh this i have this okay this is great i need to replace this information and i need to have a main as a minimum of 100 vh or something like this so let me get here get here um, also you can remove these borders and everything so it's totally upon our requirement first let me change the text to 2030 and here this one is going to be my link because this is my own website so i will have link to that will be my home page then here i am going to have cinemate and this looks good let me close the span and awesome let me first import my link that is going to be my link that will be from my react router dom i know that you might be feeling a bit bored with this lecture but the important thing is i want to show you how we are trying to convert css to jsx so let's say instagram And also don't forget to have a closing link tag that's it let me save get back here you can see this looks fine awesome also let me close this yeah this is much better let me try to remove the border curve uh, so i can just remove the round lg and everything looks good to me awesome now we just need to focus on the middle part now there is one more thing that we might find confusing which is how to activate this so behind the scene we have all the structure for responsive website but it is not going to be activated we need to do it manually and i'm going to talk about this in the next one for example this uh, we also need to add dark mode setting in our tailwindconfig.js so there are two things that we need to focus and yeah there are a lot of other things but two things about our basic structure so thank you for following and in the next one let us continue with our ui hey there welcome back now let's complete the header part we are going to do a lot of things here so the first thing is uh, i change this movie list back to normal i have removed the tailwind code because that was looking too odd the second thing let's focus on this one 
so i'm going to increase their font uh, so i'm i just need to get here and with my nav link i need to have text base so i just need to copy this to all of them if i save yep this one is better the other thing is i need to increase this for my logo so here i have my logo and i need to go with text dash to excel much better now this is okay but we need to figure out how to have this when i am on popular top rated upcoming or home so what i am going to do is first i am going to distribute because i know uh, home is currently active so this is the class that i want for my active this is the entire class uh, that is going to be yep this one so i'm going to say uh, active class i'm going to create a variable here const active class that's it and then i'm going to have const in active class something like this and that is going to be the other one let's take this add it here yeah this is great once that is done now we need to focus on one thing that how to identify active and inactive now here what i can do is i can utilize a variable is active that we can access here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this and here i am going to have my dynamic expression and this is something i am going to have a one liner function which is going to give me access to is active let's say is active and once i pass this is active i can access it here uh, let's say is active and then i can add a condition if this is true otherwise something else so if this is true i am going to apply active class if not i am going to apply inactive class let me save and let me try to copy this add it with all of them let me save get back here currently i am at home popular top rated upcoming now you upcoming yeah now you can see it's working so basically we have access to this dynamic value basically a prop inside this function i am using ternary operator if this is true apply this otherwise this so these are the two class that i have defined awesome so our second task is done to make our nablic active one small change i want to do right now as well that i need to have auto complete as off for my searches so what i'm going to do i'm going to just go with the search if i search this yeah so i need to have a placeholder i need to add auto complete off Similarly, there will be one more search and you might be thinking how so you can see there are two placeholders So one is this one The other one is the mobile search. Yep. We have that. So if I right click Now here we have the mobile search how to activate it Let me get inspect here and let me hover over this This is the mobile search which is currently having a hidden class and we need to make it dynamic if i remove this hidden if i click enter you can see this is the actual mobile search or i should say mobile menu if i give you an example here uh, activate the night mode or i should say dark mode click here you can see something like this this is here and how to activate this this hidden thing well we can try one important thing which is have a hidden variable if hidden variable is active we can hide it otherwise we can show this let's talk about it let's talk about hidden variable so i'm going to have a const which is going to be hidden by default it's true and i have and i have the set 
and I have the set state I can use use state and by default this is true that means by default hidden is true so I'm going to have this hidden everywhere instead of this I can utilize remember if I need to add any type of dynamic value I need to remove this and first I need to make my CSS dynamic then instead of this I'm going to use back ticks and now instead of this hidden I remove that hidden and I can use dollar symbol and then something like this remember it's just JavaScript code here but we need to cover it with that dynamic so we can use this JavaScript code so currently hidden is true and here it is going to print true if I get here if I get here this is the div and here you can see I can have true so that means when the value is true I am going to do something I am going to say hidden otherwise I am just going to have empty now you will see I have a hidden value so if I say this as false get back here now you can see the hidden is gone and if I open this yeah there is no hidden there is just a space empty class now we just need to have a function to update our hidden we just need to say set hidden true or false something like this and how we need to do that we just need to have a on change on this which is going to be our button nav search button yep that's it we need to give power to this nav search button and two other button as well we can add our own class name so it's not confusing right now we are not doing that but it's better to have our own class name so it's easy so this is the open menu and here what I need to do is I need to say on click I can add a function uh, let's say set hidden and I just need to toggle the value which is if it's currently open just close it if it's closed just open it and I have another button but let's see with this button let me refresh so by default hidden is false let me fix this let's say hidden is true now let's get here hidden is true change it to false true false true false awesome the other thing is I need to add something for search so when I click on search this whole thing appears let's get here and so all I have to do is just copy this add it to the button for my search get back here refresh hidden is false by default click here hidden is true click here hidden is false click here hidden is true click here hidden is false awesome so we added this functionality as well that's great now if I go on to popular I can go on to top rated upcoming popular everything things are working fine this is done the next thing I need to do is just add a class to our main since all our pages are dependent on main so what I can do is I can get into my app or I can just get into my index anywhere I want there is some base setting that I want to apply to everyone I can use tailwind it should work fine but let's add from here I'm going to have a maximum width of 1280 pixel I want my margin to be auto and then I want my minimum height as 90 vh and then my padding to be 10 pixel let me save get back here looks good to me now this is great we have our base structure with header and footer is ready the next thing we need to focus on is our dark mode which is going to be interesting because we need to add the functionality through some configuration and a proper function to trigger our HTML root. So that's all for this one. In the next one, let's talk about our dark mode.
Hey there, welcome back. Now let us try to integrate dark mode. So the first thing we need to do is jump onto Tailwind CSS documentation and scroll down a bit. And here we need to add dark mode with reference to class in our, inside our config. Get here, get inside our config file and here let's add it. So that's done. Let me try to test it out inside my index.js. Get here and I can add it to my HTML only. Let's say class and let's say dark. Let me save, get back here. You can see dark mode is activated. That's why uh, everything is working fine. And you will also see certain mistakes. Uh, the first mistake that I can see that I have rounded on my header. So I need to remove that. If I get here, this rounded should be removed. Let me save, get back. Yeah, now it's fine. And uh, you can see this is working fine. We will apply that BG and everything to our body later on. But now we know that uh, we can apply the dark mode. If I remove this configuration, suppose if I comment this, save this, now it is not going to work even though we have already applied the dark class. So we need this setting to be activated. Let me close this and for now, I'm not using dark right now. I will do or I will add this programmatically. So let me close this, get here and also let me minimize this so we have maximum space. Now we are going to have a variable, let's say const and I'm going to have dark mode, something like this. Dark mode set dark mode. By default, dark mode is false for now or let's say true for now. So if there is any change, we will be able to see this. And we also need a button for our dark mode. So let me quickly give them name so it is easy defined. So we have multiple divs. So the first div is this. Uh, let me give this a space. So this is the entire div, which is our container. Then we have the link to have information about our image and span. Then you can see this other div. Let me add a space here. This other div, which was basically currently hidden. Then you can see this other div, which is basically our mobile menu, this one. Let's give it a name. So I'm going to say ID and this is the controlling part. That is the visible part or search and our menu. So I'm going to say mobile nav basically. And this is the part which we hide. So this was the entire menu ID and this is like the navigation links. So now links and here this is sufficient for us to divide and know. Now all of this I'm doing if you know how to work with HTML and CSS, I think this should not be a problem. Now what I need to do is the first thing is to have a dark mode button, something like this. Let's add this dark mode button. It's basically a button, something like this. And then we have SVG. So let me create a button here. Let's say this button. Now inside this button, we are going to have that SVG. But the problem is that this SVG is dynamic when we have dark mode on we are going to have a sun when we have dark mode off we are going to have a moon something like this so for now let me add a svg for sun basically so it's simple svg if i get here so yeah this is the sun what we need to add is if i click on this i should call dark mode and dark mode should be activated I should add it on button itself. So on click, I should have option to handle dark mode. So I can just say set 
dark mood just reverse the dark mode basically mm. yep so this is going to change the value and here i am going to have a condition dynamic condition so if dark mode is true so if dark mode is true i am going to show sun if dark mode is false i am going to show moon what i mean by this is here dark mode is false i am going to show moon dark mode is true i am going to show sun it's just the opposite so we can change stuff awesome uh, here i can add something like this so i can pass dark mode is true then i am going to show the sun and in the other case i can show the moon uh, get here and add the svg for moon i know i complicated this a lot but that's the fun awesome let me save get back here get here dark mode is by default it's false now you can see we can change now we have information about dark mode we can do a lot of stuff we can activate deactivate whatever we want any type of stuff let's add it here you can divide this into multi line but i hope you got the idea how this button is going to work the other thing now the other thing we are going to do is we are going to utilize use effect whenever we change dark mode we just update it everywhere so here i am going to have my use effect in picture going to take my function and then the dependency will be my dark mode and yeah instead of using directly true we also need to have this from our local storage so we can have this anytime okay let's get the fun stuff the basic thing that we need to do is as soon as i change anything with my dark mode i need to set it so i can go with my local storage uh, set my item uh, this time it will be my dark mode i'm going to name it like this so it's easy to remember and i just need to provide the value which is my dark mode variable okay and remember this should be stringify so let's go json dot stringify and here we should also access the information from our local storage only and by default this is true for now and let's say local storage dot get item and i just need to access my dark mode and remember we need to parse it so everything that we are going to get here we just need to use json dot parse awesome so we are now able to store the information on dark mode but we cannot activate what i mean by this is we can change this uh, according to our requirement uh, we have information in our local storage but we are not able to target our html and add that class that is the main thing that we need to do so what i need to do here is i should just remove the class and add it if you jump on to our information that is dark mode page on tailwind css officially they have given the entire information that uh, how you can remove how you can add something like this so we can do that we can just have this information instead of passing the dark directly we can add a condition if dark is true then we can perform this step otherwise other step for example i can have this condition if dark mode is true then i just need to add it else i need to remove it let's take this here let's add it here and add it here let me add dark mode let me remove dark mode let me save get here get here you can see it's working fine now refresh by default it's true and it's also store so if i refresh it's still there let me change it to light mode refresh so this is working fine now you can observe but if i get into my application this is true if i refresh uh, yeah it's activated let me remove this refresh 
it's false and if I refresh right now okay this is a problem so now let me test this one let me change it it's working 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 and if I get into my application you can see it's true yep let me change this to false yep it's false so by default what we want is I want to have this as false let me save get back here let me refresh it's false it's false here let me change it to true it's true here if I refresh yeah it's working fine so now we are able to access our dark mode I hope you got the idea how we activated it we stored this information in our local storage also we are checking if we have set our state to dark mode then we add it if we have set our state to false for our dark mode then we remove it uh, this use effect is again working fine according to our needs and we also did a quick button we added this button and have a set functionality to change or toggle our dark mode and the other change we did is we simply check if dark mode is true then we have a specific SVG otherwise the other one so if dark mode is true we show the sun SVG so we can change it to that so yeah that's it everything that we are trying to do is with Tailwind CSS so you can see I applied a fax item at center the padding is 2 margin for right is 2 and then font is medium so we created the entire box and then applied this so yep that's how this is working now this is done our base structure is done and you also understand how to have all of this one small thing that i really want to add is border bottom for our header that is the only thing that is remaining so i can just get here and I can scroll here and here you will see I have border grade 200 I can just add here uh, border bottom 2 then border grade 200 should work fine now get here now this is visible let me add for dark version as well so here let me say dark and then I'm going to add border b1 for my dark version also another dark version which is going to be the color for border border gray 900 now let me save this and yeah let me get here switch this working fine awesome so that's how we are going to create stuff with tailwind css Till now we have been focusing too much on Tailwind and all these type of functionality because I want to give you an idea that how we can apply all of these stuff. But now it's done. We can focus on other stuff as well. So I hope you got the idea. Uh, we still need to work with Tailwind. That's for sure because we need to create entire card system and apply all of this. So yeah, we still need to work, but a big portion of learning is done because now you can create anything you want. Uh, but yeah, we still need to design this and everything else. Now, before ending this lecture, let me quickly fix this small error that I'm seeing at the top that I'm getting red and one error here. So I try to click here and I see that I got error on a particular line and it was about JSX element cannot have multiple attribute with same name. What is this? Well, I have added ID two times. So basically I was trying to create an ID nav links here, but they have already have an ID which is nav search. So just remove that and our error is fixed. So yeah, that's it. And I see you guys in the next one. So we can focus on other stuff as well. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us focus on the entire other part of website. Uh, let's start with our home page. Let's try to create something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on to uh, maybe our page. Uh, let's say this is going to be my page, which is my movie list. Since this is the 
page or I should say component which will be used as a page for different link and we are going to just switch over the API and inside this main I am going to have or what you can do is convert this into a component let's say movie list and move it here and then you can have individual page add this as a component depending on your requirement I'm going to move it here I'm going to add a section here and then work inside that section basically I need different card uh, I, I will be dividing them later but let's say I have this section I'm going to have my class name and let's say my max width is going to be 7 Excel and then I'm going to have auto so they will be centered and then I am going to have a padding on top which is going to be 7 and there are few things that you don't need to apply actually since we have covered this in main like I don't need this max width now I don't need this to be auto I just I need this padding to be honest so I can add it then inside this what I need is I need to create a div so I can have them in flex and I can have each individual card so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a class name here uh, which is going to be flex and then uh, this is going to be justify start so I want them to be in a sequence of start and they should follow flex wrap the other thing I want is they should be evenly for certain stage so that means I can customize my Tailwind CSS I can add a information uh, let's say my screen if my screen reaches a maximum of 1280 pixel I want them to be evenly instead of this justify start but I will be discussing this in a while let's say this is div and inside this div I am going to have a loop of multiple movies uh, which I am going to call them as card but let me add a individual card here uh, the best thing you can do is you can go to flow by it here and you can search about the card or you can get into your component section basically let me get an explore component and here you will have multiple card option uh, this is the card section and we can add something like this which is going to show us the name and description yep but my recommendation it will be for now just try to follow the exact same thing so I'm going to copy this one this particular card and I'm going to get here I'm going to paste it here the advantage is that they have everything by default in terms of dark mode and light mode so they have covered dark mode as well we need to change few things so first thing is go with my class equals to remember class equals to otherwise this class will be replaced with class name that's done the other thing after this is to have a closing tag to everything that's done the other thing that we need to do is replace our a tag with our link tag that's done also the closing tag that is also done uh, the other thing have our href with our two this is also done and just import our link tag so let me get on to the top and uh, I just need to go with import this is going to be link from my react router dom so this should be great let me save there will be few errors but let me get here I have this card awesome get inspect get into console there is fill rule and clip rule awesome we need to do that let's go with our fill rule this will be my fill rule awesome let's do now this will be clip and this time it will be clip rule done save get back here and we need to use image here so let me remove this now this is ultimately going to be a card and it will get an image through our api response so i'm not going to add it right now but it will be added here so you can see uh, let me refresh so you can see this is our card 
this is our card basically let me try to replicate this card multiple times let me copy this and add it three four five times let me save so i can have a visual look okay so there is one thing is missing that is our margin so we need to add that let me get here and i simply need to add one simple thing let's say margin three and if i save get here oh it's individual i forgot that we copy pasted it multiple times so undo this yeah so what i'm going to do is add a margin three here and then i need to just replicate this again to test this out let me save and i can see yeah this is better otherwise i can also do one thing i can create a list here a fake list as we do multiple times in past as well so i can create a fake list of my movies and then just wrap around it but i think this is great i am going to take this and i'm going to get here inside my component get into my card and i'm going to paste it yep this is the card and it is going to work perfectly fine i also need to take this import now add it on the top yep this is fine now i just need to have card here for whatever times i want it that means if i have movie 10 movies the card will be replicated and i just need to pass the props so this is great and we need to fetch movies uh, let me just import my card here first let me say import this is going to be my card and that will be from my components and here let me just have my card uh, now it will be simple let's say for five time let me save get here you can see this is much better also i can go with different variation one thing we missed is to have a background so what i need to do is get into either my main and change my background or i can do with my section or the best thing is to go with my app what i mean is get into my app.js and here i can add my dark background or the other best solution is to get into my routes since all of them are pages i can say this is main that will solve the problem and then i can just work peacefully inside all of them honestly there is no fixed rule so we can implement them according to our own and here what i can do is i can add a class let's say class name and if it's dark i will have this background so yeah something like this so it's totally upon us now what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this with a div class yep and this is a closing div inside this i'm going to have my main yeah i hope you got the idea let me give you a quick understanding what i did so i have this close so i have this header then i have this div i have this footer i applied this dark background to this particular div inside this i have all my route on main page i have this main route uh, this will change according to if i am on search this main will be changed if i am on a different page this main will be changed according to that page so i hope you got the idea what we just did the reason why we applied it on the top on a different div is because our main is 1280 pixel if i apply it to this it will be only the background color will be applied on 1280 pixel i want it to be on a hundred percent scale so that's it that's the solution the other thing that uh, quite common is to add it on the app itself depending on our requirement but this is great now our route will contain the main and that will solve the problem awesome now let me remove all of this since we have fixed the card and let's focus on more important stuff that is to call our api get response and do all this stuff 
I hope this was easy. Uh, we have to design main page that is going to take a bit of time. But uh, now let's focus on the API part. So that's all for this one and let's move towards the API part. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us start our work with our API. Uh, let's get on to our movie list. Yeah, here we are. And I also need one more file, which is about my link.txt because these are the link where we need to send our request. We need to create a component. Let's say I have a component. So the first thing we need to create state. So I'm going to have movies here and then set movies. And we are going to utilize our state and by default, this is going to be empty list. Awesome. You can use null and we have discussed everything about why null and why empty list previously as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a fetch request to my URL and have information stored in my movies using set movies. So the first thing I'm going to do is go with my use effect and it is going to take a function let me add it here and the other thing is i need to pass a dependency for now let's keep it open so i'm just going to fetch movies on my first run and let's create a async function uh, you can create directly uh, either a function let's say fetch movies and this is going to call our function and get our response let's say response and I am going to use await and send the fetch request to my URL. I'm going to do that in a minute but I'm going to get my data uh, from my response.json. This should also be a await request. So let me go with await. The other thing is once I get the response I need to set my movies with the response which is going to be data and I need to fetch inside content which is going to be my result. Now why results let me give you a quick idea but before that let me copy this one let me copy maybe uh, now playing only let me copy get here uh, get into my API tester and here uh, okay I already sent a request earlier on so you can see we get this response this is an object which we are going to get inside our json so the data that we are going to fetch is the object inside this object we have dates we have pages we have result so what i am going to do is i am going to access only the results inside my movies now i have these movies and once I have them inside here, I can go with my dynamic content. Let's say I have movies, then I can map information. Let's say map. And inside this, I can have lot of other control with my JSX, which is basically my card. And I will have access to individual movie here, or I should say ID and all the other stuff. Let's say movie which I'm not using right now, but I want to see if I'm able to replicate the stuff I caught an error. Let's see in console. No error. I think, oh, I haven't included the URL only. Get here and add the URL. And also I need to invoke this function. Let me save, get back. Okay, I need to provide a key property, but you can see now I am having these card. Remember, I don't have the movie information because I haven't passed this to my card. I was just seeing that, okay, this card is repeated for 20 times because we have 20 movies inside this state. That's great. Now I need to change this URL and everything in a minute. But before that, I need to add a key property. So what I'm going to do is either I'm going to have an index because I know I'm not going to delete anything. I can add a key property or I am going to have access to ID. Remember each movie has access to individual ID. If I open any type of movie, you will 
uh, get information if it's adult they will have information about their image then there is id uh, the language description and lot of other information so either i can fetch individually i can then have access to id i can have access to poster path title everything that i want individual items and we can pass them to our card but for now i am going to go with movies only here i am going to say my key which is going to be my movie dot id and then i am going to just pass the individual movie later on there i am going to just destructure everything and get individual information so if i save get back here get here clear this up refresh things are working fine so the first part is done the base part is ready now each route is going to be different for example my route for home page is now playing then my route for popular will be different for top will be different for upcoming will be different uh, what i mean by this the route is different but the path is also different this part i need to update stuff according to it what i can also do is i can create a, a use fetch if you remember our custom hook i can create a use fetch that is going to return me this response so we are going to have use fetch when we want to do this multiple times uh, yep we can do that because in search also we need to query stuff in uh, individual movie also we need to do that so yep we can convert all of this into a use fetch that is our custom hook but before that let me also fill information in my card so i can have them at one place uh, here i can remove this button this link last one since i just need to have this information so what i'm going to do is i am going to get information which is my movie awesome then i have removed the button i have accessed the information and here i am going to destructure everything what i mean by this is we are going to have information about all of this inside movie i can access them individually so i can go here and i can say this is movie and i can just say id comma and i can also have information just for a while let's say original title yep so now let me try to use original title here let me save get back here get here now you can see i have title movie titles basically so that's how you can destructure and utilize all your information so this is original title you can have this title instead of original one depending on our requirement then i can have overview i can copy this one add it here and then use it here this is great the other thing i want to do is i want to link all of them to their individual page i also want to add image so i need to do lot of things so let's start with linking part so all of this is going to link to our movie so i'm going to use backtick slash movie slash the movie id so i can use id here similarly the exact same thing i need to follow with their title which is here awesome this is done now one thing is still pending is our images so if i get back here here you can see i have access to the backdrop path i have access to the poster path but how to access these images because we don't have a concrete link so if you jump onto the movie db uh, again you will see that they provide a poster path and then we need to utilize this particular link this type of link so if i open this it will give me the image so it will look something like this we can control the quality we have option for original then png this was svg and then we can have a particular width like width 500 something like this 
so we have multiple configuration along with their width and we can have this this is different url than our api uh, this is going to be the url and then slash we need to have our image path name it can be poster backdrop whatever we want so let me copy this one and let me create a variable here let's say const and i am going to have a variable let's say image equals to for now i am going to say this slash then i need to add my what variable i need i need my poster path okay and i need to fetch it here awesome have access to this image and then i can just use my image in my jsx if i save get back here get here awesome this is the first view which looks pretty well now we have image and uh, we have a structure we have a good structure and you can see we can switch stuff and we can now compare yeah there is a size here and there but we can compare stuff if i open this one you can see it's movie detail page we are able to have a proper movie link that means the individual movie link so this looks awesome there is one more setting that i want to add right now only that what if this image is not working for some reason because there will be certain pages where you don't have image for example if i go on to this upcoming one or even i have a quick example which is avatar if i search about this you will see this type of image this is the image that i use from unsplash as a condition that if we don't have any image from the api or if by any case this poster path is empty what we can do is we can have our backup image so what i want to do here is i want to check if i am able to have this poster path i i just need to have a condition if we have a poster path then it's great i need to go with my this image otherwise i need to have my own backup image remember i have this backup image inside my assets image backup so what i'm going to do is i'm going to import it i'm going to import my backup image let's say back let's say backup let's say backup from it is going to be my assets my my images slash backup dot png and i can use this backup awesome let me save let me give you a quick idea about this condition again if we are getting a poster path great then we are going to use this image otherwise we are going to use our backup image so if by any chance suppose this is not working this poster path is empty if by any chance let's say false here and if i save get back here get onto our website oh i got an error oh, okay and this should be the default one let me save get here now you can see if i don't have a image i will utilize this one let me undo this uh undo this basically undo this poster path basically and have this backup ready yeah so that's how we are going to have our own card information now you can see we have everything that is working to display all our movies there are a few things that we still need to do the first one that i want to do right now or i should say in the next lecture just next lecture is to have all these pages show their respective movies for upcoming i should have upcoming for top rated i should have top rated that is the first priority the other priority that i also carry right now is to have my use fetch ready and to have my search ready so these are the three tasks that we want to do then we will focus on the individual page that is going to be something like this so yeah that's all for this lecture in the next one let us focus on the other part
Hey there, welcome back. Now in this one, what we are going to do is we are going to define our use fetch. So we can just pass the link and we can get the information. So let me minimize all of this. And here inside this, I am going to create a folder which is going to be hooks. Inside this, I am going to create use fetch .js. Now here I can create multiple one of them. I can say use fetch for this one or maybe I want to have a different one for search depending on our requirement. Let's say use fetch.js right now and give it a basic structure. Awesome. And what I'm going to do right now is I am going to have a state and then all my use effect task inside it. Yep these tasks. So let's do that. So the first thing I'm going to get here is I just need to have my state and I'm going to call this as data. So let's say a const my data then set data and by default I'm going to have empty array. I know I need to use array only so it will be fine. Once that is done, I am going to have my use effect. So let me take this from here. Take it here. And instead of this, I'm going to remove this. Yep. I am going to call use effect here. Let me just have a, uh, let's say, I'm going to get data, for example, something like this equals to, I am going to have use fetch and I'm going to pass this here, yeah, something like this. It is going to give me error for now, but uh, here I pass the information, I get the URL here, I pass the URL here. That's it, that is the first step. Now we don't even need the URL, to be honest, the complete URL because uh, this is going to be common with all of them, then API key is going to be common on all of them. We just need the path. Even with search, this is going to be common. The API key is going to be common. At the time of search, we are going to have path along with query. So yeah, so let's stick to general formula and then we are going to edit it later. So this is done and this time instead of data, I'm going to call this as JSON and this is also going to be JSON.results because data is a term that we are using with state and then I am going to set instead of movies I am going to set my data. All of this is great. Now instead of returning a JSX we are going to return data here. Looks good to me. The base structure looks good and here and one thing which is remaining since we are working with URL now, so I need to add the URL as dependency. And now I can go to my movie here. This is going to give me some content. Now I can utilize this data as movie and update it here. So let's do that. Let me remove this. And I'm going to call this as movies. Awesome and it should work fine. Uh, I need to import this here. Use effect. Yep, save, get here, remove all of these two. Save, get back here. Use fetch is not defined, I haven't imported it. So get here, import my use fetch. That is going to be from my hooks and then my use switch awesome save get here everything is still working so that's the first part which is converting our use effect into use fetch now let's focus on the second part which is to have individuality for each route and how i'm going to do that is by defining api path for each route so what we are going to do is if you observe the link uh, let me open the link as well. Here you can observe that this is the API part that is unique for each one of them. And I just need to pass it here. 
and then I can access it on my page on my movie list page. Let's do that. Let me shrink this side and for this I'm going to have API and here I can pass this is for now playing so I can copy that. I can have movie slash now playing and then I'm going to have for my other one let's say this this and this let me quickly add them Okay, let me save. That's great. Now I can access this here inside my movie list. So I can get into my movie list, access this API. Okay, let me get this. So here instead of this now, I don't want this. I want just my API path to be honest. Let me save, get here inside my fetch and here I am going to construct my URL. So I can just say const my URL equals to uh, let me pass it. Yep. So I'm going to access not the URL but the API. And here I am going to replace this part with my API. Yep. This part is replaced by API. This part should be replaced by my base URL and this part should be replaced by my API key. Here I can also give it a name as path. I hope that's not a term. So I can say API path. So it's uh, less confusing. Then I can access this here. API path. API path is passed here and then here i can access this api path and if i use it here awesome if i get here this is working fine get into my popular this is working fine top rated now we have top rated upcoming we have upcoming so that's how this is going to work how well for each route our api request is now different according to their path we are fetching information and storing it inside movie and then rendering this. So what happened behind the scene? We call this use fetch according to the route. So on our popular, we have the API path like this. Get here, pass the API path and fetch the updated information. So that is going to be one way that we can utilize. And, uh, I should convert this into base URL and convert this into something else. But before that, let me also introduce you to the concept of ENV. So we don't keep our API key open. So what I'm going to do is on my root directory, let me close this on my root directory. I'm going to have a file that is going to be .env. Yep and it is going to have a term like react underscore app underscore and then you are going to give it a variable name let's say api underscore key and here you need to pass your api key you can store any type of information here it's not restricted to just api keys so i'm going to take it i'm going to store it here that's it so that's the whole object now whenever i want to use this api key all i have to do is I just need to get into my process and then access it. So here if I need to utilize my API key, I just need to activate my JavaScript mode, which is my dollar and then dynamic expression. And here I just need to pass process dot env and then I need to pass the variable name, which was react underscore app underscore API underscore key. Remember that 
this should be there react underscore app underscore and then this is your custom variable name and react underscore app is always there and then our name let me save this one and to make these changes live you need to stop your server for a once let me restart this and here you can see it's still working so that means our movies are still able to load if i go to upcoming if i get to top rated go to home so our movies are still working so that means this is working fine remember you need to restart the server and we don't push this on anywhere we don't push this uh, on server we manually type the information about our uh, keys so here get into my git.ignore and inside our git ignore file i need to add .env as ignore file so we don't push it anywhere awesome this is done so that's all for this one we now have dynamic pages for these route but there is still few tricks that is remaining for our search so we need to focus on search now uh, we need to add on click to have our search activated and we need to first create a search handler on our header so we can have information and then we can send requests let's do all of this in the next one so thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now we are going to focus on the search option the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to define our api path here yep something similar but if you observe there are few things so with search we are going to have a path search slash movie okay we can add it here now we also need to have something like query so if you observe at the end we need to add query and then movie name so what we are going to do is on our search page we are going to first fetch the query using search param if you remember and then we are going to pass that information to our use fetch so let's move on to our search page first let me open this it's currently empty and we need to take inspiration from our movie list so i'm just going to import both of them because at the end of the day we need to utilize the card yep and i'm also going to send this fetch request inside my search yep almost everything is going to remain same i'm going to get this information add it here i can use basically use the movie list uh, I, if you remember i said this earlier as well so i get here i pass this information for now this is great but the thing that i want to change is i want to pass a second parameter which is going to be basically my query term or whatever i am trying to fetch so if i get here if i search anything let's say avatar so we are trying to search with search then i have this query so how to access this query if you remember we have search params i can just utilize them so all i have to do is i need to get on the top and here i am going to import my use search param use search params from my react router dom and then i have to access them so let's say const which is going to be my search params and here i can use my use search params that is great and and once i have access to this information i can just have the query term so let's say i have const i'm going to say query term which is going to be equals to my search param dot get and whatever the keyword that i'm trying to refer here it is going to be q so i'm going to say q now once i have access to this query term what i can do is i can pass this i can pass this to my use fetch with let's say q or i should say query term 
and inside this use switch I can have a condition if I get this query term by default I'm going to keep this empty but if I get this I can try to have it here let's see how we are going to do this but I hope you got the idea that what we are trying to we are going to get into our search page we are going to have this that is going to help us to access that query now if we get that query we are going to pass it here we can also create a different fetch request let's say use search fetch something like this that would be much easier to be honest but let's try to reuse it so here i can have a condition that if i have a search term then i will have this url otherwise a different one so i can have that or now here what we can do is we can also add our another parameter which is going to be query let's say and by default it's empty so this should not affect much i'm going to have my query term let's try this and see if this works let me save what is going to happen is in most cases this is going to stay empty but when we have a search term we are going to fill it let's try this let me save get back here this is working the normal pages are working top rated is working upcoming is working that means this is empty but if i try to go with my search and then I, if i go with slash or i should say query equals to and here avatar let me enter you can see it's working so that means we are using a single use fetch to do all of our task and i need to divide all this stuff also uh, since i don't want to repeat this again and again but i hope you got the idea what we just did we now have a single use fetch to make request for all different path that we currently hold and uh, one thing i want to change here is like this result for avatar so i can simply add a new div inside my search otherwise we don't need this search page to be honest uh, when we have this query term we use it otherwise not otherwise this is going to be empty so we don't need this but we wanted to cover a different part so here let me add a new section let's say section inside this i am going to have a p tag so the aim is that if i have zero length in my movies then i am going to say no movie found otherwise i am going to say uh, this is the result so suppose if i say some random movie here i get result no result found for this gibberish something like this so let's do that let's get here i have a section inside this i have p first let me add the class name here i am going to have text of size 3xl and the other thing is i am going to have them gray which is gray of 700 then i also want to add a dark version which is going to be text white uh, this all stuff is great now inside this I'm going to have a condition that should be simple That I'm going to check movies length this movies length that if this length is Equals to zero Then I am going to show that no result found for a particular query. So no result found for i have access to the query term so don't worry i can just add it here i can just say for this particular term but if i get access to the term then i just need to show the information i can say result for this particular term i can say here result for i can mention for this particular term and here I can add the quote to specify and show my query term similarly here as well if I save get back here you can see now I have avatar uh, let me also add padding on top so I can have this section I can have padding on top and bottom 
much better okay i hope you got the idea now let me try to search for some gibberish let's say this and you can see no result found but if i say something sensible avatar and you can see i got the result now i have one thing remaining still with the search that this is not going to work because we haven't added something so what we need to do well it's simple now just get into our header and just redirect to this particular url which is automatically going to handle our search not redirect but to navigate uh, what i mean by this is get here and i will explain and here we need to work with our search so we are going to have our input field i guess this is the one and whenever someone submit this input field we need to basically search but the problem here is well this input field actually the problem here is this is a input field we need to have a submit button or something like this so either we focus on a submit button or something else or we convert this into a form that would be much easier so let me cover this with a form remove this action field and inside this form i am going to have this input field and the other thing is that on submit i am going to handle it so all i have to do is on submit i will have a option to handle submit that's it the name for this i need to give is search let's say name is equals to search we also have another input field if you observe this one which is for mobile we also need to work on it and we need to do exact same task let me give it a name let's say name is search and create a form here i need to remove my action and just take it paste it add a tab remove the space get on to top have a on submit option and handle submit that's great now we need to handle submit for these two search field get on to the top and here i just need to mention the function so what i am going to do is after my use effect or anywhere else i can just mention them or let's do that here i am going to have const handle submit that is going to be a simple function and the first thing is i need to catch my event and i need to prevent my form to re-render so prevent default that's done the other step is i should access to my query so i can just say const my query term or i should say whatever the content that i'm writing in that particular form or i this field basically i can use my event here event dot target dot search dot value if you observe both of them has search term and once search is submitted i need to reset them so i can go with target dot reset and once that is done i just need to return or i should say i should navigate them i haven't created a navigator but i need to navigate them and that will be slash search and then my query of this query term let me import my navigator let's say use navigate awesome and let me also initialize this here this is going to be const navigate equals to use navigate that is done now i have access to this power of navigate and what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a slash i'm going to have search then i'm going to have a question mark my parameter q equals to and this is going to be the term so i need to use back ticks here 
and then I can go with dollar symbol, give the dynamic value of query term. That's it. Super easy to work with. What I just did here is I have something. If I type something avatar, when I click on submit, I'm going to get here, fetch the term, reset the thing, and then navigate to this particular link. Ultimately, whenever I'm typing this, pressing enter, I'm going to get into search and then to this link. And then we will follow the again route part and everything. So I click here. You can see it's working fine. Remember, I am using navigate, so I'm not re-rendering. What I mean by this is if I click on inspect and if I try to search something, just see if they are refreshing or re-rendering. If I say avatar, press enter, you can see just this div is updated. Rest, my header is still the same. My footer is still the same. So remember it's not refresh. That's why we are focusing on navigate. So that's all. Our search is completed. That's it for our search part. We still have few things remaining. Uh, for example, if I do this, uh, maybe if during the responsive part, I want them to be center and that can be done with customization of tailwind. Uh, what I mean by this is if you do this, here it's on center, but here it is on side. So we can customize that. That is one. Second thing is we need to have page not found that we need to focus on. And then third thing is to have our page, a proper detailed page. And then we have deployment that's for sure. But uh, these are the small things that we can correct right now. That is uh, to make this at center and page not found then focus on the detailed page. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us focus on Tailwind CSS customization. All you need to do is jump onto the documentation for version 3 and here you will get option or I should say a tab for customization. Uh, we need to do some configuration, talk about content, theme, screens, everything that we can customize. Now, one thing you need to remember that we can either overwrite our current setting. So for example, we have some blue color and if we want to overwrite it, we can have a different value. So one thing is about overwriting and the other thing is to extend something. So we can add a new shade of blue with a different term or I should say a, with a different name and we can add something new. So the current features are going to stay there, but we are extending our own requirement. So that's what we are going to do. We can do this with our screen size, with our color, the spacing that we require, everything. So that is going to cover almost everything related to our requirement. The first thing, one small change that I want to do right now is if you compare both of them, there is some height difference and the margin. So I'm not going to fix everything right now. One thing that has been pointing uh, with my whole screen presence is this margin. So I want to go from three to two and yeah. And if you want to play with height, you can change it from 2.5 to two. Yeah, it's almost there. So you can see that's how you can play with all the values that's done for my header. I'm not going to fix everything right now. And I'm going to focus on the concept about tailwind customization. So the first thing, either we can start with extending something or overwriting something. So let's uh, extend something. Uh, if you remember, I had this section in which I applied justify start for all the values. So that means all of them will follow justify start. Justify content with a value of flex start. If you remember, uh, you can observe this from here. It's from start. So everything is arranged in a manner of left to right but I want a custom screen size, uh, like, let's say from 500 pixel to 1000 pixel. This should follow justify evenly, something like this. I can do that. I can create a screen size uh, with the help of my screens and I can add this configuration with my tailwind. So if you observe, if I want to work with my customization of screen, 
remember the default value that we add is for minimum screen minimum width or whatever the add or whatever the value we are adding that will be minimum so if i say sm 640 that means minimum width is 640 and then there is no upper limit now if you want to add upper limit then we need to go with a different configuration uh, if i scroll down you will see you will see you need to add something like this max and then you can mention a maximum configuration so there are multiple examples if i talk about others we can override the default value by giving the exact same term that currently exists with tailwind then we can override for a single value here they are overwriting for everything but here we can override for a single value then we can have and then we can have extension if you see uh, this doesn't exist for screen size so we can add this with the new value like 3xl with a new bigger size then we can have smaller breakpoint um, we can add excess which doesn't exist so we can add this and then we can provide custom names so that means they doesn't exist and our team doesn't want to follow this sm mdlg xl to xl this is too confusing so we can say okay tablet laptop desktop that would be much easier to follow then we can have some max width breakpoint i just talked about this then we can have fixed range this is the best to be honest we can define fixed range for each one of them and then we can define okay i want 340 pixel to 500 pixel for sm or i can say this as mobile then 500 to 1000 i can say tablet then 1000 to 1500 i can say laptop and then 1500 to above i can say uh, bigger screen something like this so i can define my own terms along with my fixed breakpoints so i can mix two or three concepts together so let's try this instead of sm i am going to use a new term i am going to say let's other and then i am going to provide something like this okay so let me get here let me get here into my tailwind configuration and here what i am going to do is inside my extend i am going to create a object let's say screens now these terms are fixed you need to extend it for screens only so i am going to have my screens let me define this object and then here i can define a key value pair so i am going to have other i am giving it a new name basically and then i am trying to define a range let's copy paste this range and here i am going to say if we are from uh maybe 340 pixel and maximum let's say 1200 pixel if this is the range so if we are using others then this is going to be the range awesome let me save this get here and let me try to add other or others let me see the name it's other so if i have other i am going to apply justify evenly let me save this one get back here get back here currently this is start you can see all of them on left all of them are aligned towards left but uh, if i get into inspect and my current screen size is now you can see i am currently at 882 and now they are spread evenly if i go uh, below this this is spread evenly and if i remove this let me remove this save get back here you can see now this is inclined towards the start now this is the best thing now we can define a custom range uh, and provide any type of setting to a custom range it's not just the entire range we want to have from minimum to maximum we can do that uh, there are multiple examples since it's entirely different framework which is tailwind which comes under css topic i don't want to dive too much but you will get an idea because the documentation is great you can just jump on to try and see if you get any error just try again and things will work out so that is the first step to add your own configuration and it this works very well now let's try to add some color for example if i jump on to my colors here these are the colors that are currently available but i want to write something new which doesn't exist for example currently we have rows 
uh, from 600 to 700 but i want a rose uh, maybe 650 that should be between them or maybe i want to have some theme common color which i'm going to use and which are going to be pretty common that i'm going to have with my day-to-day -day cards day-to-day -day layout what i can do is i can give them a name and a proper value so i don't have to remember again and again what is this bg slate and everything so if you observe here let me open my route here we gave it a name as bg slate 800 i don't want this i want to have a proper name i want to have a name something like dark gray something that is easy to understand i can do that and all i have to do is i need to get here inside my colors and then i can define a particular value let's do that so get into my theme get uh, just minimize this side get here and here i just need to add my colors so what i'm going to do is inside my extend uh, either i can do after screen or before screen but it should be inside extend so i'm going to have a comma and then let's go with colors and here i just need to define an object and then i'm going to give it a name dark bg something simple then i just need to provide the value and what i can do is either i can see the value or i can just do a quick thing uh copy this one provide it here that's it now if i want to use any other i can do that so that's done now this is our dark pg uh, if i get into my routes for a single for one second let me change it to something light so we can see if this is change yep this is change now let me remove this slate 100 and provide my own which is dark pg get here you can see this is working fine now i don't need to remember what i don't need to remember this slate 100 i have my dark bg and suppose if i give a different value here instead of this let me try to take any random value uh, get here let's take this one let me try to take this one if i save get back here now you can see our dark bg value is this so this is applied so that means this dark bg term is working and remember this is the background term we are not going to replace this we are going to replace the color name which was slate 100 or something like this so that means our dark bg is working fine now i can utilize this every time i need this background color awesome similarly i can create some primary color some secondary color or i can have a range according to my own like currently they have this purple 50 100 200 300 i can create that uh, for now let's try to extend this purple only or maybe blue if you jump here this is blue and i want something in between 500 and 600 or maybe 800 or 900 i can do that uh, let's do that let's have blue now remember blue is predefined so what i can do is i if i write any other value it will be overwrite blue so what i want is i want between 800 and 900 so i can provide a value 850 and here i can provide that particular value so let me say this one for now and let me try to give it anything for once let me try to give it something like this because it's our control right so but you need to give a genuine value because you are creating your own project suppose this is blue 850 right now so if i save this one and if i need to use let's try here let's say for now let's say blue 800 if i give this you can see this is blue 800 let me try to take this out if this doesn't exist blue 850 will look something like this now let me define my blue 850 and here let me give this value either get back here or let me give this let me save get here now you can see blue 850 will look like this so we can define any type of value 
that may exist or may not we want to overwrite it or not but if you are using blue 850 if that is already defined that's great but you need to have some genuine value that is nearby this 800 and 900 otherwise you will mess up like this is green currently uh, so if you have something like this it should be darker than this or lighter than this if you are using blue 850 here similarly you can define an entire color range like you can have dark bg and then you can define 50 100 200 your own color line basically and uh, then you need to use dark bg dash uh, 50 dark bg dash 100 something like blue 850 so you need to do that later on if you want to experiment you can do okay that's done that's about our color part that how we can extend and overwrite as well then we can define certain other terms like minimum height or like minimum height or anything else so that can be done here we can also define the value for one two three that we were using till now so we can overwrite or add information uh, here you can see the default value currently px means one pixel uh, one means four pixel 1.5 is six pixel two means eight pixel so currently if you see if i use mr2 that is margin 2 it's eight pixel uh, but I don't want to use this uh, maybe this feels confusing to me this whole value I can define my own spacing range I can have something like 1 for 8 pixel 2 for 12 3 depend on my own requirement so I can extend this I can add more uh, for example if the limitation is till 10 I can add my own if I'm using too frequently I can have my own further numbers so I will have p13 that means 3.2 25 rem of padding great again i can override this sm mdlg and excel so all of this can be controlled and not only this i can define my minimum height and other information something like i can have a minimum height and this is going to make sure to add a comma and here i can give a range something like i can have 90 vh which will refer to a value of 90 vh something like this i can do that so yeah lot of things can be explored i strongly recommend if you want please 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 read about this documentation they have defined everything to be honest and they have defined everything the only thing my aim was to give you an idea how how to add them for example, I gave you an idea how to add this color, how to add this screen. Now it's totally on your hand how to explore more stuff, maybe for minimum value, maximum value or spacing. So that's all. We actually don't require any of this, but I wanted to give you an idea how to customize stuff. Thank you for following. And we have lot to do with our project with page not found, detail page and lot of other small stuff. hey there welcome back now we need to focus on two things the first one is about our page not found and the second one is about our detailed page so depend on us which should we start first uh, i think let's start with page not found because it will be easier and we can complete it quickly so let me get inside our page not found and what we need to do is i need to add section uh, now the aim is to have a page a simple page i should say a section then we are going to divide the section into two part on the top we are going to have a line 404 oops page not found then i'm going to have a image and then uh, in the next division i am going to have a button uh, that say go back to home something like this so let's do that uh, here i am going to have my section or i can directly divide two divs but let's say i have a section and then i have these two divs the first one and the second one now what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a class name make them flex and then give them a property of column uh, the reason is i want to keep everything as center so i can just go with justify center and then add a padding of two on both the side 
that's great then i'm going to focus on my first div and i just need to have a class name again this is going to be flex because we are going to have two things and i want them to be uh, on top and bottom the first one is going to be my p tag which is going to say 404 oops and the second one is going to be my image so let's say flex and then flex call that is my column and then i'm going to say items at center so i keep them at center and i need to maintain margin on top and bottom with four okay this is great now i need to have a p tag and that is going to say 404 oops and the other thing i need is my image let's say img and um, I need to add an image first so let's get here I am going to have import that will be my page not found image I can give a different name which is much easier to read uh, let's say this is going to be from my assets and then my images and then what I named it I guess backup no, I guess page not found only assets images yeah this is the image page not found now remember all of these are from unsplash dot png awesome let me save and i just need to add it which is my page not found image and give it a tag 404 page not found that is my alternative tag this is great i also need to add a class name here so i can have rounded that means the default border radius and then i am going to provide a class name to my p tag so let me save and give you a demo what it looks like so if i go with slash abc if i enter this is the current look and where is the text this is the 404 oops so what i want is to have a bigger size and if it's dark so it should follow the dark pattern okay so let me jump here have a class name let's say text 7xl that should be the size then i'm going to have text gray 700 that should be the color in normal case then i'm going to also convert it to font bold and then i need to maintain a margin on top and bottom which is going to be 10 and during my dark mode i want to have a different color let's say white let me save get back here you can see now it's working fine so this will be applied on all the format but if i want to overwrite for dark mode i can specifically mention this font bolt is currently on both of them margin 10 is currently on both of them then text gray is currently on both of them but later on we override text gray for dark mode this is done now i also need to change the image size it's pretty big so what i can do is i can cover this image into a div and provide properties to this specific div let's do that let's take this image add it here and provide property to this particular div so this will be auto size according to the size of div so what I'm going to say is the max width for this div is LG. Let me save, get back here. Now you can see the image is automatically sized because image is 100% of that div and the size for this is maximum width of LG. Now anytime you get this type of doubt, what is this value? All you need to do is jump onto Tailwind and search about max width. And you will get an idea that max width LG is basically 5.2 pixel. This is done. This is our first div basically and that's done. Now let's focus on our second div where we are going to add a simple button. So I'm going to have a button that will say back to home or back to cinemate something like this. So let me save get back here get here. Okay, this is uh, currently doesn't have any property and I also need to add a link and cover this button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the link first. Let's say import, which is going to be my link and that will be from my react router DOM. 
and let me add that link here let's say this is the link and i have a property and i have attribute of two that will take it to home take this add it here looks good now let's provide certain property to our div let's say class name and i'm going to have a flex so i can just provide justify center center and i'm i'm going to maintain a margin on top and bottom for four great now with our button i can have a class name and i just need to provide a width to this button i can just say width 64 again if you have doubt jump onto css and here you can see width 64 basically means 256 pixel okay that's great so this is our width 64 then i can define each individual step i can define what is going to be the text size let's say excel then i if i need to provide a background color i can provide a gradient i can provide something else i can do everything so if i jump here let's say gradient something like this gradient color stops so here you will see if i want this type of color i can say bg gradient 2 r and i will start from indigo 500 similarly i can define from to so from cn 500 that is this part to blue 500 that is this part so i can define any type of gradient and i can define something like this from indigo 500 via purple 500 to pink 500 so yep there are a lot of things that we can do so let's add a gradient let's say let's have a value something like this which is going to be bg gradient 2 r that means we are starting from left to right and this is the leftmost color then the middle color and then the right color okay this is great and then i'm going to focus if i want to add something related to hover but first let's see what is the current status this is the status of our current button now you can see I can add some ratio towards my border radius. I can add some padding. So there are a lot of things that we can add and we need to add basically. So let's say I have a rounded uh, LG. So because I want to have better radius, then also I want to define padding. Let's say for X axis, it is going to be five and for Y axis, it is going to be 2.5. Once that is done, I want my text to be at center. It is already at center basically. And the other thing is I want to maintain a margin. So margin right. So margin R for two and margin bottom for two. Let's save it. Get back here. It's much better. Okay, I should increase the boldness of the font. Let's say font medium much better and i can change the color uh, if i want uh, instead of okay i haven't given the color to be honest so let me add it here let me add text white save get back here much better so you can see that's how we can do that and i can add hover effect also if i jump onto if you remember the site flow byte So if I jump onto flow byte right now, if you search about buttons here, you will get multiple options. I can copy them from here directly, but I really wanted to give you an idea how we define any type of button. So you can see this is the button and I can just copy this one basically and you can see the hover effect. So if you observe text white, BG, 2R, 500, 600 and then 700, then they have hover effect, something like this, hover, BG gradient to uh, bottom right, basically. Then they have focus for on clicks and so on. So that's how they can have buttons. You can see so many options and we just need to copy paste. Okay, that's it. That's all about our page. If I try this click, it's working. Let's go to a B C or I should say some random random get here. It's 404. Oops, click here. It's working fine. 
now one important thing uh, we can convert these common things into component and then we can reuse them uh, let me give you an example we don't need this but i want to include this in tutorial so i'm creating a example uh, let's say i have a component and i'm going to call it as button dot js so let me say rafc remove this and take this let's take entire button get here get here so this is the task of this entire thing entire component is just to create button now what i'm going to have is i'm going to have certain props or maybe some children or something that will be filled here because this button will be for multi-use and whenever i want to use this button i'm just going to use this component provide a child that child will be replaced here so let's say it is going to have children and i'm going to access the children here let's say children save get here and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this button so this is a component and here i am passing this back to cinemate and i've imported this from button usually it's recommended to first add it in index.js and then import it from that but i'm just giving an example let me save this one get back here let me try abc get here you can see it's still working so what we are doing is we are we have this component and we are providing this value this value is getting here and then it is replacing here now if i ever want to create this type of button again all i have to do is just copy this paste this component and here i can say let's say home if i save get back here you can see i have this second button so that's how we can work now usually what happen when you have a bigger app or i should say when you have big apps you have component for each small thing it can be button sidebar then element inside sidebar your pop-ups modals notification part everything is a component so this is where tailwind is used to create component and this is we then use component it looks like normal tag now because we have given it a name something like this so we can create multiple component of button according to our requirement um, this is some predefined setting for this let me remove this let me keep this but let's import it from component and add this inside our component i'm going to say export my button that will be from slash button yeah let me save close this close this and that's done basically so our page is ready and if i refresh things are still working fine awesome let me get back to my home things looks good page not found is done we need to focus on our movie detail page awesome see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us try to focus on our individual page something like this where we have information about our poster title overview its genre and then all the other information but before that let me quickly open the tester and let's see what all information we have so currently this is the information that we get which is pretty limited or i think it should be fine so this is the information we get when we try to access 20 30 all of them together for an entire category if you observe we are trying to get information about all the top rated movies all the upcoming movies but now when we are on a movie page i want specific image for this particular movie id only now if you get here get into our links here is the individual movie id or i should say the link to access individual movie id let me get here get here and then just replace it with my movie id and if i send this is the response that we are going to get 
Now things are in detail. We get information about its genre. We get information about the official homepage. And then we also get information about like budget, its popularity rating and the production companies that are involved. Uh, yep, all, all of this revenue, run times, language. So there is a lot of thing that we can actually show on the individual page. So that means when we get on any individual page, we need to send a request. We need to get this response and then we need to show this information. Okay. Let me close, close, get here inside our movie details page. And the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to create a section here. Let's say section. And inside this, we are going to cover everything. So I have to divide things into two part. This is going to be my division for image and the other division is going to be for text. So uh, the visual representation part and then the text part. So I'm going to divide this section into two part and then this is going to be our H1 tag, P tag. And then again, this is going to be a loop because we are going to have multiple genre. So I need to access this information and show here and lot of things. So we, we need to play with lot of things. So what I'm going to do is I am going to demonstrate in simple plain text for now. Let's say this is the first div. This is the second div. And here I'm just going to show the name. To show the name, I need to call the API because we don't have any information on this page. I can access the ID from my page using my route parameter. If you remember, if I get here inside my routes, this is ID. I have access to this ID. Other than this, I don't have access to anything. So that means I need to get all the information and send a request. Okay, let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply import use param. Let's say use params. That will be from my react router DOM. The other thing I also want to use is import my use state and my use effect. That's it. Now get here. The first thing I'm going to do is access the information with use param. Let's say const uh, my parameters and then I'm going to have my use params. Uh, let's say console.log and print this information. Let me save, get here, get here, get into console and click on this movie. I have this information. Awesome. So now I have information about this. I can send a request. I can send a fetch request using the use effect. And I need to store all this information inside a state. Uh, here I can say data and then set data, which will be use state. And this is going to be an empty array. They are going to send an object, right? Yeah. So I can either have a empty object, something like this. Yeah. Now let's work on our use effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just define my async function. I'm going to have a function called as fetch movie. And that should be simple. I am going to get a response. Uh, with my fetch request. So let's say fetch and here I need to provide the URL. Then I'm going to convert that response into JSON. So I'm going to have await response.json and then I'm going to utilize this information and I'm going to set my data with this JSON. Once that is done, I need to call this function. So let me get here and call this. So I'm going to make this fetch request every time I load this page and this fetch request is going to be to a particular ID, which is this parameter. Let me copy the link either. I can copy from my links. That will be much easier. Let me get here. 
links.txt and let me copy this add it here now instead of this okay first i need to convert and use my backticks yeah now i can use my forum dot id something like this this one dot id and use the dollar symbol yep let me save and let me try to access information what i'm going to do is let's try to console log my json response and see what we get let me get here open this image this is the response that i'm currently getting now i can access information individually the original title or title overview and other stuff i can have access to tagline and now i can design stuff according to this so i can just use data for that for example here if i just want to print something let's say that is going to be my data dot title let me save get back here now you can see this is fall let me try to open any other this is beast and here you can see this is beast so yep we can access information if you find this name odd you can use movie this is also fine much readable honestly and i am going to use movie now so that's how things are going to work uh, so now let's quickly design this page to be honest let me remove this and focus on this entire designing part so i have this section and i need to divide both of them uh, because there are two divs that will be side by side so i'm going to have flex by default it is going to be row so i'm going to say just justify around and then i'm going to also use flex wrap so there will be on top and bottom when we squeeze them and here i'm going to maintain a padding of five that's great now these are going to be two divs that we are going to work in first div we just need to add an image so that should be easy and again i am just going to provide a max width to this so max width that should be small and here i just need to add the image and remember we get image we get image but there is a different way to access that image we get the poster path if you remember during a list uh, movie list yeah i need to get into card okay get into card here yeah this is the path this is the path that we need to utilize again so let me get here let me try to define something like this and here this time it will be movie dot poster path i guess uh get here open this i have poster path right poster path yeah okay and i also need to have movie dot poster path here and i need to import this backup image so what i need to do is i need to have my import this will be a default import so this will be backup from i need to get into assets slash images slash backup dot png or jpg i need to check that get inside my assets images it's png awesome looks good to me so i now have this image i can mention it here that's done let me add my alt tag and here i am going to pass out movie dot title and once that is done let me quickly add a class name rounded so i can have border radius okay that's done let me open a movie here awesome so this is working fine now we need to work on the other side where we need to add name where we need to add all the other information so the first thing i'm going to do here is work on our second div and let me quickly add class name so the max width is going to be 2xl and then i'm going to have a default text gray so everything inside this will have this one which is text gray 700 and the text size should be lg 
the other thing i am going to do is for dark mode i am going to set text as white once that is done we can now focus on other content once that is done let me add my h1 and this is going to have my movie dot title yep and i'm going to provide few class name this is going to be a bigger text so let's say 4xl and then i'm going to have it as bold so let's say font bold and i need to maintain margin on top and bottom and i'm going to save this one if i get here get here the next thing i need to add is about the information so let's do that so i'm going to have a p tag a simple p tag that is going to have a class name uh, and just going to maintain margin on top and bottom and it is going to be simple i just need to have my movie dot overview awesome let me get back yeah so now i have this information let me try to squeeze this and if you observe one quick information right now this is at center for most of them um, but for us it is on left side and it is on left here so what i can do is i can give it a text as center here and for lg screen i can say text on left side if i save get back here so currently it's on left but as soon as i go on this type of screen it's on middle yeah this should work fine let's move towards the next part uh let me close yeah so we need to loop over to genre and find the name and then add this okay first what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply add a p tag and show that particular information so i'm going to have p tag and inside this i'm going to have individual span so this is what uh, we are going to represent this action adventure fantasy and science and this is the entire p tag awesome so let's say action and let's hard code it for once and let's provide the class name so i'm going to have class uh, i need to maintain margin on right side so let's say margin 2 of course this is going to require a border if you observe there is some border and i need to provide border color then there will be border radius and then there is padding awesome so this is border then i need to provide border color let's say gray uh, 200 then i have it radius which is rounded then for dark mode i am going to change the border color so let's say border gray 600 and then i'm going to have my padding on all side which is 2 awesome if i save get back here you can see this looks great now i need to add few classes to my parent which is going to be maintaining the margin from top and i want all of the span to be on same row so i can just say as a flex and then i can just say flex wrap by default they are going to be on the row direction only but as soon as i uh, squeeze my screen i need them to be wrapped and i need to maintain a gap of two let me save this is good but let me try to have this multiple times let me save now awesome this is working well so now all i have to do is keep it once and i just need to loop over them so i'm going to have my movie dot genres and then i just need to go with my map dot map and here i just need to provide the function so here inside this we are going to select the individual genre let's say genre and then we need to do our task which is span let's take this one add it here add the indent and here instead of action it is going to be genre dot name and again this is going to require a key because now we are inside map so we need to pass a key uh, here let me add it here let's say key equals to uh, we have genre id so i'm going to say genre dot id let me save get back here you can see it's thriller and horror i can go with avatar so i can match everything let's say avatar open this one 
I got an error. Let me go to console. I got an error. Okay, so yeah, I understood. There are chances that if this is not available, then we don't want to show anything. So what we need to do is, here we need to check a condition. If movie genre is there, then we are going to work with this condition. Otherwise, we are going to have something empty. That is nothing. So if this is the case, then we are going to work on this condition, which is basically this condition. Yeah. So if movie genre is there, then we are going to show our P tag. Otherwise, we are not going to show the P tag. Let's have it here and let's have this P tag here. I hope you got the idea what we just did. We are checking if this exists or not because there are chances that some movies don't have any genre and it's empty. So we are going to get an error because of this map. So we are just checking if this exists, then we are going to have this P tag. Otherwise, nope. So this P tag is covered with parentheses. If this condition exists, then yes, we are going to execute this. Otherwise, it's empty. Let me save, get back here. Now you can see this avatar is working. Uh, let me refresh. Yeah, so you can see now I have all the option. Yep. Now we have a better look to compare. Now if I talk about this stars, you can copy the format from uh, Flowbyte. All you have to do is you can either go with the component and here you will see rating and I have used this in multiple projects. It worked pretty well. So there are multiple type of rating that we can uh, use. For example, this one. We just need to copy this and we can add it. It's simple. So all we have to do is here, I need to add this one. This is going to be a simple div. And again, we need to replace certain stuff. Uh, let's go with class equals to with class name equals to and let me refresh this and if I save this one, I should have certain number here. Yep, uh, we will change it. But before that, we need to remove this a tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to into span. So I'm going to remove this href. Let's say this is a span and the closing is also a span. Awesome. And I'm also going to remove this unwanted thing. I'm going to remove this text small. I'm going to remove font medium, going to keep the color, then underline I'm going to remove, hover I'm going to remove. Yeah, the dark version, that's it. Uh, I'm going to get this number from our API. Then I need to get here. I also need to remove certain stuff. For example, I don't want font bold. Yeah, and then we are going to fill this information. So instead of 4.95, I am going to have movie dot vote underscore average then here instead of 73 i am going to have movie dot vote underscore count let me save get back here much better i need to fix the size uh, and if i jump here uh, scroll down you can see vote count and vote average so from there, I'm getting this information. Also, let me remove this text SM so we can get onto the normal 16 pixel. Awesome. This is much better. Now we need to focus on the other stuff, which should be easy. Uh, let me get here. This div is done. Now I need to focus on quick P tags. So let's say I have a P tag inside this. I need to have a span which is going to have the text of budget, revenue or something like this and then the other information. So let's say span other. So here will be the value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a class name uh, and I'm going to maintain a margin of four on top and bottom. And again, uh, this is going to be bold. So I'm going to have margin on right side as two and then font will be bold. 
here we are going to write something like revenue runtime or something so let's say runtime for now and here we need to give the information so for runtime i'm going to have my movie dot runtime and then we need to say minutes let me save and see how this looks yeah this is working fine i think i added too much gap uh, what i need to do is i need to remove the extra spacing yeah this is much better now i just need to replicate this again uh, how i get this runtime i have this runtime key and this is the value remember this is in minutes so i am just adding it directly now i just need to replicate this multiple times for whatever the information i need so runtime is done now i need information about budget revenue release date and imdb so let's quickly add them let's say budget and now budget is going to be budget that's for sure now we don't need this so let's remove the minute and then we are going to have revenue so let's say revenue and this is going to be revenue once that is done i'm going to have my release date and this will be release underscore date okay let me remove this text and the other thing that is the only thing that is remaining is our imdb rating so i'm going to have imdb code here imdb code and what they did is this is tricky one actually so they haven't given us the link of imdb but just the code we need to create our link ourselves so if you visit any type of imdb they have a base link so let me give you an example they have something like this which is imdb.com slash title and then the id so if i open this one so that's how the movie is going to look like i hope you got the idea so if you remember in the initial lecture i said that imdb used title for the individual pages like we are using movie then the movie id imdb used title and then the movie id that is what we are trying to show here i have imdb code and here we are going to have imdb underscore id if i save get back here you can see this is working fine now the only difference is that we need to add a link here and this is an external link so we are going to use a tag and this should open on a new tab so we are going to use target okay so this is my span instead of span now i can use a href and here i am going to have imdb link basically so instead of this let's use dynamic value and here let me paste my imdb uh, dot com slash title and here i need to add this link uh, use dollar since we are in javascript right now and add this information now after href we need to have target underscore blank so it open on new tab one thing that i recommend is also add a relation and let's say no referer so if you are not familiar with the website or if you don't want to give juicy backlinks it's some seo term i don't want to explain this right now but it's a good habit to just say no referer let me save get back here i got an error uh, what did i do oh yeah we converted this into a tag so we should have a here let's save get back here awesome things are working fine if i click here we are able to open imdb so yep that's how we are going to have a full-fledged movie page that's great i hope you got the idea how we are going to design a full-fledged movie page with all the information now one thing i need to check if this is responsive or not so suppose this is the mobile version and this looks responsive we can maintain some type of padding if you want if you think it's too close on this side but i think it's okay okay so that's all for this lecture uh, our detail page is done uh, two things that are remaining that i want to talk about which is going to be how to have updated title so if i have this page 
I need title should be updated according to my current page. If I am on popular, title should be updated. If I am on any other type of movie, title should be updated. So that's the one thing. The other thing is if I scroll down, open this page, you can see I'm not able to see header. Why? So if I scroll down here, open, you can see I'm not able to see header or let's go to upcoming movies, scroll down, click here, again header is missing. So what usually happen is, since we are loading component and we are not refreshing page, every time you open a new page, React stay on that whole height level. So if I scroll down, React will try to open a new page from this level only. They don't move to a new top. For example, if I scroll down only this much, and if they visit a new page, they will try to scroll down this much. You can see the problem here is we got the footer. If we had a bigger page, React will scroll down to that bottom. Let me give you a quick example. Let's say I have this maybe 20 times. Let's copy paste this 20 times or something like this. Now we have a bigger page, suppose. So if I go to home, scroll down to bottom, try to open this one. Now you can see again, I am at the bottom. What happen is react uh, try to maintain the height, which is trouble. And to solve this, what we need to do is every time we open a new page, we want to scroll to top. Otherwise we will miss out sometime header. Sometime we will open on half page. So this is an issue. So these are the two issues or I should say functionality or whatever the thing is or whatever we want to call it, but we need to uh, add a feature for to update our title and solve this scrolling thing. So thank you for following. I hope you got the idea what we just did and what we are going to do in future. And I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's talk about how to work with the scroll thing. So, well, we have a solution right now because React Router noticed this problem and they created a solution with version 5 itself. So if we are using version 6, things will be easy. So they call this as a scroll to top wrapper and it's pretty straightforward. What we are going to do is we are going to utilize use location and we are going to keep a check to our link. Every time we change our link, we are going to scroll to top. So if I open a new page, that means our link is changed and we are going to scroll to top. So suppose if I scroll down, open this one, uh, currently my header is missing because I'm at the bottom. So our link is changed. So react will try to scroll it up and it's pretty simple. You can see the code. Let me try to copy this one and just implement it with our own project. Uh, what I'm going to do is let me cover up everything. There are two things I can do. Either I can create a new folder called wrapper and create this scroll to top wrapper. It is simply a component. Either I can create this inside here itself. Let's say new file and I can call this as scroll to top dot JS and I can have this code. Make sure it's scroll to top. The file name is matching and save this one. So what we are doing uh, using use effect, using use location, uh, checking the path name and inside my use effect, I have added a dependency for my path name. Every time the path name is changed, we are going to execute this code and on the first run itself. So I will scroll to zero zero. That is my top and I'm returning null. So that means I just want to activate it. I, every time I open my web page, my path will be changed. My link is changed and I will scroll to top window is basically for our browser. So now how to activate this? The simplest thing is to execute this in our index.js. So just before our app, we can call this component. So let me try to import it. Let's say import, uh, it's default, right? So let's say scroll to top uh, from my component again we haven't exported this 
so i need to do this here let me give you an example then we will go with index and here i just need to call this let me save get back here do i get an error nope so this was the step uh, create this one and then all we have to do is use this uh, within our router just above the app that should be working fine looks good get here refresh page scroll to bottom open any movie now you can see i am at the top i hope you got the idea how we did it go to another page scroll to bottom open anyone we are at the top so that's how this is going to work and that's a quick solution we don't need to do anything but before that i am going to have it either i can create a new folder here itself call a wrapper something like this if i want to differentiate it uh, but let's have it here these two are actually elements and let me have my export and this is default i guess and let me remove this from default yeah let me have here scroll to top that will be from scroll to top awesome and let me get here now it's not default and i'm okay with that uh, i don't need this yep okay let me save this should work now also scroll open this one things are working fine so that's how we are going to implement this scroll to top functionality that's it now in the next one we are going to talk about how to implement and change our page title functionality hey there welcome back now let us focus on how to update our page title there are two ways the first one is to individually update for each individual page that is also great so we we can have a use effect every time we open a page we are going to update the title the second one is we can create a hook and then we can call this hook inside our component both of them require same amount of task and we can implement with any one of them uh, first i am going to open a random page which is not available currently you can see it's an image and let me try to update the title here what i am going to do is i am going to have a use effect simplest way to do that and i am going to run a function inside this i am going to have my document dot title which is going to handle my title and i can pass a new title or one thing i can also do i can pass title from my router and i can access it here and i can show that title so for now i am going to say uh, page not found slash cinemate let me save get back here now you can see for this particular page it's page not found slash cinemate so that's how you can control this stuff now if i go to home it is still going to say page not found cinemate because we haven't refreshed the page that means document dot title is still stick to that so we need to have that on every single page if we need to update otherwise it is going to have the previous one so if i open a new page if there is a title then it's okay otherwise it is going to continue with the previous one we are not refreshing the page we are just rendering the component so this is never updated again similarly like we never update our header so we need to do this on every single page now what about the dynamic pages for example we are using this movie list page for our popular for every single thing like uh, for our top rated for upcoming how we are going to detect that so the simplest solution is let's open our route yep you heard it right let's get it here and then just mention the title on route itself so here we are passing api path we can also mention the title for this particular page and when i am on the page like on when i am on the movie list component i can utilize that title 
Okay, let's do that. Let's start with our home page and mention title for everyone. And here I'm going to have a title for my movie list. Simple, I'm just going to pass home. The next one, which is movie detail, we are going to create a dynamic one with the help of this ID or whatever the title we are fetching for the ID. Then we have for movie list, let's say title and here I'm just going to pass popular. Similarly for others, I need to pass something similar. Let me copy this one, add it here, add it here. This is going to be top rated. This is going to be upcoming. And this is for search. Let's have a, we have a different search page. So we don't need to worry much. Then for page not found, let's add it here itself. I'm going to call it page not found something like this or since we also have a different page for page not found let's avoid this here awesome let me now jump onto the individual page i just need to add this stuff so let me get here the first let's start with movie detail page so i'm going to have this after this one or before this one Let's say after this one, I get it here. I update this. Now instead of here, I need to access the title. Now I need to pass my, now I need to utilize the title here. Awesome, save, get back. I need to add that as dependency. But before that, if I open this, it's undefined. That's because we haven't passed any title for our movie detail. So what I'm going to use is movie.title basically. Remember in route we haven't passed anything for our movie detail page. So we are going to use dynamic, save, get back here. Now you can see it's fall cinema. But if I go to home, we are not updating yet. So it is going to utilize the previous one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this, close this one, oh, also, also, also. Let me remove this because I'm not going to get any type of title here. Yeah, let me close, open my movie list and access the path as well as title. Now here inside my case, let me import this as well. Use effect is imported and instead of movie title, I just need to use my title. Let's say this, get back here. Now this is home. If I open any movie, it's movie name, then I am back to home. Awesome. Now I need to replicate this. Okay. This will be replicated. It's movie list. So it is already replicated for my popular, for my top rated, for my upcoming and for my home as well. Awesome. Now I need to do this with other pages. Let's say this is done. This is done. I have search page. Now for search page, I am going to do this after this. And here I'm going to access Oh nope, I don't need title. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have something like search result for some message like this search result for and then the name I guess I got the name the term which was here query term yeah query term search result for query term this so I, I need to import this yep save get back here now if I search avatar enter search result for avatar get back to home home that's how this is going to work so that's it now one thing we can do we can convert this into a hook so it will be like use uh, update title something like this or use title and then i just need to pass this term i don't need to use this every time this will be done inside that uh, our hook Let's try to implement that also. Remember, we cannot create a function because use effect is not going to work inside a function. It will work inside our component or hook. 
and for hook we need to use a term which is use let's say use title dot js something like this use document title or something like this let's say rafc remove this mm, return will be null we are not going to return anything but we are going to implement something like this let me copy this one add it here now one thing we need to recognize is that we are going to get our title here and it will be something like title yep now let me try to import it on my search page so let me get here and say use title awesome that's done and here i'm going to call it uh let's say use title it is going to return null so it's it doesn't make sense to have anything else and here i'm just going to pass this let me remove this now here what i'm doing is i'm going to send this information which is search result for my query to my use title here use title is going to access this information and then it is going to call the use effect it is going to update the title with my information slash cinemate so i'm not going to write cinemate to everyone because it is going to be common for the entire website now before using anything i need to import this let me save let me save this one as well get back here uh, try to search something you can see it's working fine so that's how we can convert the entire thing into a title now for a reference you can just let's say page title just so it's better in terms of readability nothing else we are returning null so this is also null it make no sense to store this but uh, it's easy to read because everything we are storing somewhere on the left side so we are also storing this that's it that's how we are going to utilize the entire thing this is going to be use title now again i don't need this use effect now if you observe we have multiple hooks what we can do we can create an index and then try to utilize this whole thing uh, that will be homework for you but hope you got the idea let's try to update it on the other pages or you want to do it yourself ah uh, let's do that so all I have to do, I need to import them. So let me copy this everywhere first. Uh, this is save. We don't need to do anything with our use title now. We just need to pass the information. So this search is there. Then I have this use list. Let me try to add it. Let me also try to update the sequence so on top. I am going to have my react import then my hooks and then my component awesome and then instead of this i just need to have cons page title equals to it will be use title then i just need to pass the information which is my title since i'm getting through my prop i can remove this now and i can remove the import as well and if I save, let's get two different pages. Let's go to home first, popular, top rated, upcoming. This is working fine. Movie list is done. Our search is also done. Now what is remaining? List is done. Detail is remaining. So what I'm going to do instead of this. I can have my movie title here it's directly a hook let me remove my use effect here let me save and this should work fine let me get here open any page it's working fine yep 
so this is working fine uh, the only page i guess is remaining is this one i'm not going to do this here so you can access this code as well and everywhere else i have utilized the hook except page not found so you can copy them uh, if you require that's all also if you want you can create a index.js for hooks and import them and then you need to update all the import for use fetch and use title awesome 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 this is done so our update title is done now each of our page currently holds a updated title according to the requirement that's all i hope you got the idea and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back and welcome back to header again uh, so there are few things that you might want to change in future and it totally depend on your requirement for example if i get into the smaller version that is the mobile version and here you will see that currently i am in somewhat center for the entire app whereas if i go on to the other example i have the full fledged access so what you can do is you can remove the container which is going to bind you in a proper width you if you remove this you will have access to the entire space the other thing that you might want to change is the height of a logo or padding here totally on our requirement so we can change the height here let's suppose if i have height as 8 let me save get back here now you can see it's uh, improved and if i observe here you can see it's not a big difference the other thing you want to improve maybe this size if you uh, watch out for svg size so that is going to be for our dark mode uh, here is the svg and we have some height and width if you want you can play with this entire button and if you scroll here you will see this button currently holds lot of classes because there are small small things that this button currently holds uh, so if you want to change some setting now is the time that you can do because you have information of everything maybe you want to remove the focus well you can do that uh you can remove this ring color and everything uh with the focus you have access to that and now you understand what is this the other thing is maybe you want to change the padding you want to change the height you can do that right now because now you have the control so i hope you got the idea of what my intention with this lecture was now you can just go on to this mobile version and this looks better but yeah you can add padding for the mobile version as well so that's all it was a quick lecture where i just wanted to give you that you have the power now along with the knowledge and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now it's good time to deploy our project before that make sure you update all the href wherever you don't have any type of link for example uh, if you get into our component for footer uh, we missed out this entire href point that means we had just the hash so i added my personal links and also just add ref uh, with no referrer that's it that's the basic setting that you might notice okay once that all of this small thing is done make sure you have git in your system now if you don't have don't worry just jump on to git-scm.com and here you can install the latest version you can have previous version as well it's not a issue any version will work fine but if you are doing a fresh install try to use the latest one whatever the version you are using it is not going to matter much once that is done open your command prompt terminal in your project folder here i have opened it inside my project folder also make sure your server inside your terminal is stop and it's not running so here what you need to do well the simplest thing you need to do right now is check git version so you can just go with git dash dash 
version and it is going to give you the version that you are using. Any version will work but you need to have git in your system. The other thing that you are going to require is a github account. Make sure you create that. I guess you already have because of Netlify. So you need a github account. Once the account is created, just go to github.com slash new so we can create a repository. Make sure you also remember the github password because we need to log in in our local system. Once that is done, you also need to create an account on your Netlify. You can use Vercel as well. Uh, process is exactly the same. Uh, I have also created a proper guide how to deploy stuff. I have information about Netlify for Vercel, even for the backend that we use in future for other projects. So I have created everything step by step. Uh, let's focus on this one. Kit is done. Uh, here we need to create our repository. Let's say Cinemate. Uh, I will add description and everything later. Currently I'm going to go with public, but you can go with private as well since it is going to be our own deployment and then our own Netlify account. So we can keep everything private and still everything is going to work. One problem that you might face is since you are a student, you want to show your code. These are practice project basically. So I recommend you to keep them public and you can share your repository anywhere you want. Once that is done, just click on create repository and here you will have your empty repository right now and you will get these type of step. Everything is fine. I have added them here as well. So you don't have to worry much. So what's the next step? Well, we need to get here and we just need to apply all the individual step one by one. Let's do that. We need to log in. So let's first uh, clear this up. Let's go with git init. Once our git repository is initialized, I just need to add all my files. Let's say git add. Okay, I might get warning, but everything is fine. The next thing I need to do is I need to have a commit. So let's say git commit and then I'm going to have my message dash m and then you need to provide your message in quotes. So we can say our project deployment initial code or something like this. I'm just going to say complete files. Press enter. Everything is done. Now we need to focus on the branch. So we need to select the branch. Let's say git branch capital M and then I need to select main. Earlier we used to have master but now since master is a term that depicts uh, some type of hierarchy, master, slavery, so something like this. So now we have main instead of master. Master is still there, you can use that, everything is going to work fine. It's preferred to call it as main now. So let's have main. Remember master and main branch are different. If you are using master, great. Otherwise you can use main. Everything will work fine. Then we need to just add our remote repository. So let's say it is going to be, uh, first I need to visit this one. This is going to be git remote add origin uh, about our repository. So let me add it here. Press enter. Everything looks good. And now I need to just push the code. Now as soon as I push the code, it is going to push all of these code except my env and my node module because node modules are going to be approx 200 to 300 mb we don't need that everything will auto install on our server with the help of package.json if you observe this these packages will be installed on our server along with the required dependency so yep that's the advantage we don't need to push and that's why we have git ignore file that tell git that we don't need to push this. Also, we don't need to push our env. Awesome. Let me get here and just push this. So I'm going to have a code. Git push. Since we are doing it for the first time, let's say minus u and then origin main. If I do that, I'm not logged in. So I'm going to get a pop up here. Let's add my username here, uh, Shubham Sharda. Let me add my password.
So you might see this error and let me give you a quick reason. So what GitHub did with recent update is we don't have support for password authentication. That means if I'm using my normal password that I use during the GitHub account creation, I am going to get an error. So what's the solution? Well, we can generate a password that is going to be specific and then we can add it here. How we need to do that? Well, that is going to be here. Let me copy this one. Let's get here. So the easiest way to log in is using our personal access token. Now how to get that? Well, once we have our account, go to setting. Uh, inside that you will have developer setting, then you will have personal access token, generate the token, give it a name and give it a duration and then generate the token. This token will be treated as your password. If you see username and password, this is the easiest way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into my settings. And then what we need to do, we need to get into our developer setting on left hand side. Here it is. Once we are here, we need to get into personal access token. You can see these two are currently working for me. I just removed this just to create this tutorial. And here I can just create on generate new token. I can give it a duration and no expiration or something like this. I will be deleting this after the lecture. So let's say no expiration. Then I can give all the scope depending on our requirement. Uh, there should be all. Okay, I need to check it myself. So depending on our requirement, just access all the scope, whatever you want to do. So just check all of this according to the scope that you want. So I have access to perform all type of action. Once that is done, just generate your token. And here you also need to give it a name uh, just like this. So I'm going to give it a name and desktop desktop react lecture once that is done uh, again scroll down generate the token and this is your password basically now remember as soon as you refresh this will be gone you won't be able to see it again so make sure you copy store it somewhere now once that is done what i'm going to do is either i can log in through my command prompt or i can just add these credential so here i can add a window credential you can just provide the link about the GitHub. So let me copy this one. And here let me provide the mail. And here I need to provide the password. If I say OK. Make sure you have removed your HTTPS and everything else along with the ending slash. Let me press OK. Now this is done. And if I try to push again now, you can see this is working fine. That's done. Now if I get here, try to refresh. You can see this is our project and there are a lot of things that we need to change. Like I need to remove this and we will be doing that in a while but make sure to save this not mine but yours uh, let me remove refresh things looks great now we have pushed our code from our local to our github now let's deploy on our netlify so what i'm going to do jump on to just simply log in on our netlify get here on our dashboard and simply have import an existing project here you need to select the provider I am going to get with GitHub. This will ask for authorization. Uh, once you give the authorization, it will get access to all your repository. Make sure during the authorization, they are going to talk about if you need to give access to one in repository or all of them. So totally depend on you. Make sure you give access to Cinemate. Let me write Cine. Yeah, this is the one that we are going to work with. 
select this one select the branch that you want to deploy with and scroll down it is going to run the build command if you remember the previous project we created our own build but now it will be done automatically on our netlify and click on deploy site it is going to take some time but now you need to understand one thing that netlify will keep checking our main branch for every commit so if we try to do any change maybe locally we did some changes everything is great but if we push any change on our github netlify will automatically update our website this might take few minutes i guess maybe five to seven minutes totally depending on netlify server but if i push any change it will be updated on our netlify now one thing you need to remember that our website is not going to work because we haven't provided the env file okay so how to add that just jump onto your site setting and here get into your build and deploy and here you will have option for your environment variable you just need to edit and add an environment variable let me do that let me get here uh, take this react key let me add it and also let me copy this one let me add it if you want to have another just click here add them uh, since there are chances that you have five to seven keys as well let me save now this will only work if we do a new fresh push to our github because they need a refresh but let me get to my site overview your site is not deployed let's see what error we are going to have uh, deployment fail for our website let's see what's the error and you can see all the information about our website so we have something like page dot title which is not used we need to fix that also there is a dependency missing for param dot id we need to fix that so let me get here with our movie detail page awesome uh, first deployment and we got an error yeah basically i already have the information but yeah i wanted to show this the thing is whenever you open your terminal to be honest all information is here when we try to start and stop our terminal if you see currently i'm running my terminal so if you remember i got a warning message at the time of uh, adding all my files the warning message is usually for our running server so currently i'm running my server and this is the message that you can see and we can ignore these message by using a eslint code but let's try to perform things in a systematic way so the first thing i want to do is get here into my movie detail page okay let me close this for a while get into my pages movie detail page and yeah we have a use effect and here we are utilizing params.id let's have it let's have it here with our dependency also uh, this is not a major one but let's see what i'm going to do is i'm going to push again and now we don't need to log in remember let's say git add dot it is going to add all our files and you can see i'm i'm not going to get an error let's say git then i'm going to do a status here status this is going to show me all the change that i did which is just my movie detail.js let's say git commit minus m that is for my message and let's say updated use effect dependency that's done let me do git push and then so by default it will be for my main okay now you can jump onto github refresh you can see 18 seconds ago i updated it awesome now here it will call for an update automatically let me get to my overview you can see this is the building process currently it's going to build the update that we did again i got an error let's get here get into my deployment 
see the response here and again i guess these are the few common things that we need to fix so i guess either we add the es lint code otherwise these are the warnings that they are not going to ignore remember we can control these warning uh, either one thing we can do which is pretty common inside our environment variable we can add ci as our key and then value as false this will help us to control this or the other thing is we can use a command which will be added here whenever we want we can have a command like eslint disable next line something like this so here it will not be affected let me give you a demo for this and ultimately what you need to do is you need to use something like this so i am going to give you a demo so i'm going to remove this page title from everywhere but i'm going to keep one so we can show this uh, use case of eslint disable next line so i'm going to have movie detail movie list and then search this is movie detail movie list i am going to remove and then there is search that i am going to remove only on movie detail i have kept this eslint disable next line so eslint will be disabled for this one particular line awesome let's go with this let's get here let's try to add git add again if you need to check status you can do that so you will see we have modified three files uh, i'm going to just have a commit and this time i am going to have a message updated page title i just need to do git push looks good get here now this time let me refresh you can see i got my changes 13 seconds ago and if i get here on the home uh, let me refresh it's currently building let's see if this works or not Let me try to refresh again and you can see this time I got a publish. That means either we remove them uh, all the warnings or we add any type of code to ignore these warning just like this. I try to give you demo for both the method. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this one and here you can see our website is working. Remember that we have added our key our api key in environment variable that is why it's working if i open this one things are working fine change this theme get here go to popular top rated upcoming home try to search something avatar enter open this one yep it's a full-fledged website awesome that's done now what i'm going to do is get here on site overview get into domain setting and here i can have option to edit my domain name i'm going to say cinemate dash ss because dash ul is already with me so if i save this one now this is going to be my new name that's it that's how you are going to deploy your website now remember we can update our website anytime all we have to do is do all the changes and then push to our github from github our netlify will auto pick up the commits and build them first two were failed and then we published it now there can be a case where you want to push changes to github but you don't want to publish them on netlify so what you have to do is you need to work on a different branch you can call the branch as dev branch or any other temporary branch or something else everything that you are going to do on main branch will be published here on netlify on our website so how to do that well i have given steps on the whole uh, guide so suppose for the initial setup uh, we perform all of this then uh, when we need to push changes we do git add git commit git push origin main or just git push that will be for main directly but if we want to save the change to our development on we don't want to push them on netlify you can try to change your branch which is to dev uh, push all the changes to dev 
and then you can just do all the changes and keep pushing to dev according to your own requirement but maybe now you want to move towards main and push to netlify then you need to perform this step let's try to give you an example this is just extra content to be honest our deployment is done this is more like real life practice that i'm going to show you so in the next one let's talk about secondary branch dev branch or temporary branch where we want to push the code but not to display on netlify so yep this is our production app but there will be certain apps that we want to test out but don't want to push them so in the next one let's talk about the whole dev branch process Hey there, welcome back. Welcome to some advanced practice concept which is not related to project but just something that we do in real life. What if I want to create another branch and push my further changes into another branch and when I have enough of changes and maybe then I want to deploy it on my main branch. The main branch is connected with our Netlify. So how we are going to do that? Well, the best thing, the best step that we need to do is to move towards a different branch, which is our dev. So all we have to do is one thing you can also do right now is to check on your VS code, your current branch, which is main. Now what I'm going to do inside my project folder, I'm going to get inside my dev branch, get checkout dash P dev. This is for the first one. The first time you get into dev branch. Later on, you can just say get checkout dev. So let's do that. Let's say get checkout minus p dev. If I press enter, you can see I'm switched to dev branch. Now, if I want to push all the current code, all the code that we currently have to dev, I need to push them. You can see now I am inside my dev branch here. So how to push them? Well, the steps are simple. Just add them, commit them and push them this time into dev. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have git add dot git commit minus m updated dev on dev branch. That's great. And now if I want to push anything, currently everything is there. But if I want to push anything, if I want to do any change, I will be pushing that to my dev branch okay everything is clean right now but if i get here right now uh, refresh this get here on our github you can see i now have a dev branch and if i get here this is the current dev branch you can see this is dev and this is main now let's try to do some change on dev I don't want to publish them on main. I don't want to publish them on Netlify, just on dev. What I'm going to do, let's try to do some change. Let me get into my header and let's try to change my name of the website. Let's go from Cinemate to CinemaMate. So here Cinemate to go with CinemaMate, something like this. Let me save. This is currently in dev. Okay. So if I push, I just need to push my changes. So what I'm going to do, I am going to follow this one. Get add, get commit, get to push. Get add, get commit minus M, updated name, and then get push origin dev. If I just do git push, it would be push to our dev only for now because we are in dev branch. That is done. Get here. And if I refresh, currently I'm in main. You can see dev is updated. So if I go to dev, you can see dev is updated 23 seconds ago. And if I open this SRC file, get into my component, get into my header. And here you will observe that I have cinema mate. If I go to my main, so instead of dev, if I go to my main, inside my main branch, it's cinemate. Also uh, on our official website, it's 
Cinemate, but on our dev, it's Cinemamate. So we have updated our dev. Now suppose you do tons of changes, maybe for a few days you are just working on dev. Once all of your change are done on your dev and now you want to merge your dev to your main so that your website is published. How you are going to do that? Well, these are the steps. All you have to do is just push all your changes to dev. Once that is done, just move to main branch. Say git checkout main. Now you are inside your main branch. All you have to do is see if there is any change in your main branch by any other developer because you are going to work in a team. So you can do git pull origin main. Git pull origin main. We don't have any changes because currently only we are working. Now we are going to merge them. Git merge dev. So I'm merging all the change from dev to main. That is done. That is just one file. And now I'm pushing all the changes to my main branch. I did this locally. I merged them locally. Now this is going to be on our GitHub. That is done. Get here. Get into my Cinemate. You can see I updated two minutes ago. And here if I jump, uh, if I refresh this one, you can see it's currently building, which is my updated name. Uh, it is going to take few minutes and then we can see all the changes on our website. This is just some advanced content, not related to GitHub basically, but I really wanted to add this. So all of you know how things work behind the scene. Yep, it's published. Get here, refresh. Now you can see it's cinema made. Okay, let's try to do few more changes. Instead of doing directly on main, I can do that on dev branch or I can just do that on, on main branch as well. But uh, let me do get checkout to my dev. I am now inside my dev branch. Get here. Mm, now as soon as I change the branch, that particular code will open. If I am in main, main code will be there. If I am in dev, dev will be there. So it, let's go back to Cinemate, push them to dev, git add, git commit, update it to Cinemate, git push. I need to mention origin dev. This is done. So if I get here, you can see dev is updated, refresh. I'm currently inside my main, but dev is updated. Okay, now remember what we need to do, merge them. So I need to first go to my main. So get, uh, push all the dev changes, then get checkout main. I'm inside my main and now do all the steps. So I have pushed all my changes to dev. I am into my main, see if there is any change on main by any other teammate if that is there let me get them i don't have any change so now i'm going to merge my change that were related to my dev and then push them so let's say get push origin main that is done now i need to refresh it's updated one minute ago refresh it's building let me try to refresh again it's published let me get back at cinema mate refresh it's cinemate so that's how you work with multiple branches and that's the real life case so i've added all of them Remember GitHub is something that you are going to get an error and it's impossible for me or anyone to solve unless and until I am on your system. So you need to learn about this. You need to just try to have your hands on search on Google, search on Stack Overflow. I've tried to add everything here, try to give you a proper demo, took multiple cases. 
Now it's on your hand. Make sure to try to deploy one of your project and you will learn a lot of things to be honest with the errors. So that's all. Now we have our website ready. It should be working. You can try to test it out on your desktop, laptop, mobiles everywhere. And since we are utilizing Tailwind CSS, it is responsive. And we tested it out. You can see it's working. We have this menus, go to popular, things are working fine. Open any type of movie, get back to our home. Yep. That's how we build a project, work with repository, deploy on Netlify. Exact same steps will be followed with Versal. Only one change will be there that we need to authenticate with Versal. Everything will be same, but instead of Netlify, it will be Versal. That's all. I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. So we have completed our entire project in the previous session itself. We discussed everything else, but why again we are in a new lecture talking about the same project? Well, there is one issue that you are going to figure out after a few months or someone else is going to figure out on your application. Let me talk about it. So if you jump onto our application right now, if you test anything, things are working fine. You can move from part A to part B, component to component, open any page, get any information, try to search about anything and things are going to work fine. Then what is the problem? Well, the problem is 404 page or I should say page not found page or any other direct page is not going to work on Netlify directly. What I mean by this? Well, if I jump onto any page directly, let's say ABC. And if I search about it, you can see I got a page not found, but this is not the page that I created. This is a Netlify design page. Where is our page? It's not available right now. So let me get back to our site. And if I try to visit any of the link, maybe our top rated link. And if I try to open this directly, this is not going to work. Why? Well, it's a Netlify issue. If you try to deploy the same application somewhere else, maybe Versal or any other server things are going to work fine but with netlify you need to do one more additional setting if you want to read more about this uh, there is a specific blog on netlify itself where they talk about redirect rules and everything so if you scroll down a bit you will get information about the configuration of netlify.toml and yep we are going to work on this particular file it's common error also available on Stack Overflow. I'm going to link both of them. So what we need to do is we just need to create a, a new file, which is netlify.toml. We need to add it on our main directory and we just need to add this code. That's it. And then we deploy it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get onto my VS code server. I'm going to have my terminal. The first thing is I'm going to get into my dev branch because on the development branch, I'm going to add everything. So the first simple thing, let me check out to my dev branch. Currently I'm inside main. You can have a look here. Let me get into dev. Okay. Now we have switched to dev branch. Remember whatever the change that we are doing right now should be inside dev. So we can push them on dev first and then on main. If you did any change on main, make sure you reverse that so we can work on dev right now. Here you can see I am inside my dev. Now what we are going to do? Well, everything that is followed here on our on our stack overflow answer. I just need to create a new file. Let's call it netlify.toml. Let me get here inside my main directory where I have my env, git ignore and everything. Let me create a new file, which is netlify.toml. And then next thing I need to do is I just need to copy paste this particular code. Yup. Let me save this. Now all the changes are inside my dev branch. So let me push them. That's done. I should just do git push origin dev. Now all these changes are pushed to my dev branch. So if I get here, if I refresh, you can see 
I got some information here that my dev branch is ahead and what I need to do is I should now also have these changes on my main branch. So all I have to do is just to get checkout and I should go to my main branch now and if you see my main branch don't have the change what I can do is I can pull these changes I can say git pull origin dev so I will have all these changes inside my main branch and if things are fine if all the changes are fine I can just update it on my main branch on github currently I pull these changes locally now I'm going to update my github git push origin main looks good to me if I get back here now if I refresh and here you can see I have my netlify.toml so now if I refresh I think it's going to build it's going to take time to build it's building okay it seems it's published now yep if I refresh this and if I try to test this now let's say if I go to ABC yep I now have 404 if I try to uh, jump onto any other page let's try to refresh this you can see now I'm able to access them so yeah that's all if you want to read more about it I will link this official documentation so you will have uh, access to the Netlify blog as well I hope you got the idea I know this might be a bit confusing because we are now playing with branch but don't worry I only play with branch in the final lectures uh, of the project so you also get the idea how things work when we try to increase the complexity in real world as well. Here the simple things that we are doing is we have created two branch the main branch and dev branch. Whatever I tried to do right now was inside my dev branch and I pushed all the changes on github on my dev branch. Then what I did is I shifted to my main branch. I never had my netlify.toml in my main branch. So what I did is. I pulled the change on my local system and then I updated the main branch of github. This might sound a bit complicated but don't worry if you start practicing git and github you will get used to it. Our main focus is react remember I just wanted to make you comfortable with git and github so I discussed about this branch thing. Thank you for following if you don't understand about branch just stick to main and everything will be working fine because at the end of the day main branch is attached here on our netlify just jump on to main do everything things will work fine but if you want to play with branch then you can just have a dev branch or test branch and you will learn more you will get more errors and keep on following i hope you had great learning session with the project and i see you guys in the next one